question that I can't get my computer to come to work. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. My thought process here was just that we needed to sit down as a group and talk about some of the things that we need to be looking for in the next five to ten years within the confines of the city. Um, capital improvement projects, looking at our equipment and what's going to need to be replaced, um, looking at rates for utilities, and then um, and then talking about the increasing cost of health care and where we see ourselves going in that perspective from a financial standpoint. Um, I thought we'd start with capital improvements. Now, what do we anticipate in the next five years or so as far as things that we'll be doing? Anything major? Well, I mean, about everything as far as like the you know, water, you know, was kind of highlighted the other night for our uh, We've got some hydrogen stuff that, you know, we don't really put out as far as much water as, you know, really would be desirable in fighting fire. When the water pro the first water project was done in 96, uh, they had, you know, DWR look at it and they, came up with a plan and put in a lot of water lines and you know the contractor did and they they cut back, my understanding was they cut back from the original plan and part of it was on some of these lines that would have benefited our fire flow. So we're looking at water lines, you know, for fire flow and uh, we've got, you know, the two and a half inch line like you know we ran into on six streets, uh, you know, those due to age need to be Phased out because it used to be an ongoing thing. We're running the same thing from time to time. My my thought would be that uh, you know you're going to need to have a study done as far as if you're wanting to work on fire flows. You know what what needs to be done where what size lines four inch traditionally is not a good good line size for you know for fine water for fire. So so it gives it basically an upgrade there. We got sewer. Sort of, Issues once again, we've three years of, of uh, you know, maintenance and stuff. On uh, we've had some TV work done on some of the lines, we've got areas in town. Once again, we need to probably have a study done and, and you know, a plan as far as you know, what we how we want to attack that. Just the fix the quote the worst areas that we know we have problems with or with, or just you know, do it. You know, system-wide study just to see, you know, how really how bad things are. You know. Okay, and if we did a system-wide study, what are we talking about in terms of cost? Well, I would have to get with the engineer. You know, like I say, it's I'm sure it's going to be pretty costly. You know. Fifty thousand, a hundred thousand. Oh, I don't think it would be that much. I mean, it just depends on you know if we just want to look at what we know we have wrong, get get a plan up on that. I don't know. And what if we wanted to do a system wide? I, I really don't know. I mean, that's something we just have to get with our engineers. I think if we could just decide what we want to concentrate on, <coughs> uh, you know, we could get prices on that. Same thing with the water. As far as electrical, you know, it's kind of just. You know, Chris Nagler kind of looked at our system when we were applying for that grant. You know, we're we're better a lot in most towns as far as electrical, but you know, there's definitely improvements can be made. You know, full wise, you know, changing out some of the year, whatnot. So. Streets, it's just a, uh, it's a lot of it's just a, uh, you know, a weather-based type deal. If we have a real hard winter, a lot of freezing, thawing, we may have. A road that would normally have made it through in pretty good shape, but just because of the weather, we try to keep it sealed up and everything. But you can have a, you can lose the road in the winter real easy. So we just it's kind of what how we come through the winter. We do a slurry seal and we re, we rebuild roads every year. We turn them clear out and completely rebuild them as needed. Okay, so. hey, do we have some kind of a plan for how we're doing that? I mean, is there a list of stuff that's in bad shape that? Well, that's that's just what I was saying. It, what what looks good 
if I, if I did one this fall and come next spring and maybe a road that just goes that you really didn't anticipate going as far as that goes, you know, so, but, you know, we can see roads deteriorating once they get to a point where it's not feasible to slow the field and kind of save them or prolong their life, then we say, well, we're going to have to rebuild this road at this point. But right now, what I'm saying is I, I, I could have a list today, come spring after this, depending on what happens winter, and it, it could totally change. Okay. Do we have a list or do we maintain a list somewhere of things, of what we've done in the past? Oh, yeah. Okay. Where does the council, I'm looking for input from you guys too, what are, our, what, are we, what are our priorities, what do you think need to be our priorities? Um, are there things that you guys see that we need to be dealing with that we're not in terms of water sewer lines, electric <coughs> lines, street repairs? Well, we've addressed the sewer with uh, cameras, but you know, eventually it'll fail. Yeah, I mean, we know we've got some, some issues, and this be a matter of been six, eight years ago. Yeah, I mean, we just need to get, I don't know, I don't think there's any grants out there. We, you know, we don't send that out on most stuff. It seems like we're not so we couldn't qualify for something, but you never know unless you ask. But uh, on, the other <coughs> end, on the other side of the sewers, the storm sewers in town, the big ditch, you know, we, every time we get a real wet year, it always becomes an issue. Normal, it's, it's not. But you know, you get a get a get a wet season, and then it, it, the erosion comes back. It's just so so narrow; it, it just cuts in and everything. We you know, we had it. Uh, well, that last guy, John, that when we the guy that did the study, you know, we were going to apply for that uh, funding for the on the electric, you know, for the buildings and Chris Nagley. No, 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 no. The other guy. Oh, on the. Um I can't think of his name, but anyway, yeah. they did kind of a kind of a, a look at it and gave some ideas, but no, we've never really hired an engineer to say how do we fix that. But that's going to be a real, real costly thing. But I don't know where the priority is on. Like I say, right now, it's not so much that we get get a bunch of rain and start forcing, and everybody wants to fix it now. So it's just just something that probably needs. Yeah, he has videotapes of the worst areas. Okay. He's, he had trouble with a list, and he cameraed for two days and made video. Okay. And they have measurements on the video that tell you where <clears throat> from certain manhole to this bad spot. So. Okay. All right. So we could, if we just want to concentrate on what we know is bad right now, to, you know, to address that part of it, and then in the future, you know, maybe look at the whole system. But that's okay. Well, I'm just thinking that you know, if we are proactive instead of reactive, we might be able to get more done for our dollars than having to come in in an emergency situation and and deal with it at that point in time. And then, like I say, there's, there's various ways to fix these problems. You can have the sewer line, have a new liner put in it, you can have a pipe pulled through there and burst in place, and there's, you know, they're just, and that was, you know, would have to be decided for that to be the cost factor. So like I say, And also just dig it up and you know you got a problem in there and dig it up and just replace that pipe. So there's several ways to build out that. Okay. Mel, what would you say is our first priority right now? And something that we really need to do or fix? <coughs> well, you know, the water lines, you know, the, the fire flow thing and, and you know, we hit on it the other night that, you know, this this could affect our insurance rating, you know, what everybody pays, you know, and plus uh, you know, we've got areas in town that if we have fires, or you know, there's they've got they carry a lot of line on their truck, and I mean, it could go to another hydrant, you know. But uh, it's something that uh, in the event of a fire, that'd be a real high priority. So right now we're just kind of once they get by this, it hasn't been an issue. As far as the sewer, that's an immediate problem. You know, if we have a collapse or a failure right there, so. I think the sewer would be, be, be high as far as, because that's, 
you know, once you get immediate property damage, of course, if you have a fire, you have property damage too, but there are ways to get around that part. You might have to lay, you know, hose for another block or, you know, haul water in or whatever. But, so, I'd say the sewer to me would be a pretty, pretty high priority. You only have money set aside in that, in the budget for that anyway? We, we've been setting aside, you know, some over the years, but we also transfer out of the sewer fund to the general fund. Right. So, well, how much is in that sewer fund right now? $98,000, which is probably a drop in the bucket. Oh yeah, but I mean for, if we're just doing spots and pick your worst ones as you go, I mean. Those liners, is that a good way to go or not? Well, you you can do, uh, that's mainly they'll use that in an area where you, excavation is a real problem. We've got a lot of alleys in town. There. We've got fences up on both sides of the alley, and then you, you want to dig down six, eight, ten feet, you know, where you go with your dirt. And they do this a lot in mainly in paved areas downtown, paved alley streetways where it's, you know, it's a lot cheaper to insert rather than do that. But we may have an issue where, the, you know, it's not very readily accessible as far as what you, what do you do with your dirt as you dig it up. So it may be, may be a good payoff to go ahead and insert it, re reline it and everything. But, that's where an engineer would look at it from their experience on cost and everything. They could recommend what, you know, what, what could be done most cost effectively. You know, so, so, but with that money in there, you've got got some money to get, you know, at least pay for a study or, you know, come up with someone who would handle uh, uh, the, the bidding process and, and, you know, get the best cost effective thing for the return. Do we have, like, three areas that you know is the worst? Well, we could come up with that pretty easy. You know. I mean, the, I mean, if we've already taken the camera to know where the worst part of it is, I mean, we can spend money all, spend money for years on studies to do this or do that. Well, I'm I mean, just talking about the, the, the best way to pick it Right, yeah, but I'm just saying, I mean, if you know you take like two or three of your worst areas and concentrate on them, yeah. we'll figure out what Would you have to re-camera those again just to see what you have? I mean, if they're bad, they're not any better for sure. So we, yes. we, we know that you know, that's what we have. So. I think the way the technology would work is, yes, they would re-camera what we think is the bad spot, and they, they measure each tap. Like you have a four-inch line coming from your house. Mm -hmm. It measures that exact GPS coming down, <clears throat> puts it on a tape, they pull that liner in there, they harden it, and then they have a robot that goes in there and cuts a hole of where there's a tap. So there's literally no excavation. Really? And that was eight, ten years ago. Yeah, the, they, so like I say, a lot of, if they were going to, they do that in a lot of cases, and if your lines collapse, you know, some tile can, can go down, and, and actually a lot of times that's reinserting isn't a good option, then they go right. through and they just, pull the mandrel through there and it basically burst the pipe and they just pull a new pipe through there and do the same thing he's talking about. So, yeah, a lot of areas that's about the only way you're going to fix it, so. Okay, anybody else? Kevin, how do they, how do they seal it? That, I don't know. I questioned it back then when they were yeah, giving us question. Yeah. But, yeah. We, when we had in camera that, we did about a $8,000 sewer foaming. At Root X? Root X, mm -hmm. yep. And he foamed the whole town. I don't know well, if you no, did. It didn't foam the whole town. No, he didn't. Just those bad spots. Just problems who had uh, continual root and, and that sure quieted the sewer calls down. For several years, and now they're back. But we're getting some back, so yeah, we, we need. We're not getting as much done as we used to on that. Either time, 
manpower and everything, so but, uh, it does it does help. So. They foam it on the outside? Or it's no, inside. Inside. It's just we've got an applicator that we usually we'll root cut. We've got a root cutter that will cut the roots out, and then we've got a, a uh, applicator that we pull through there, and it's got foam in there, and we pull it through at a certain rate, and it sprays the foam out, and kills the roots. It, it's a it's a pretty effective. We went back in uh, after we've done that and, and recamered it and have seen good, pretty good results. Not 100%, but it does really slow down. We've had areas where we continually almost seem like have to go out you know, numerous times during the year and it's pretty well, pretty well slowed that down. But we, what we saw basically a lot of times during the video of, of the lines was we might have a piece of, piece of pipe that has gone, you know, basically the dirt around the pipe's holding it together to a degree, and but you, know, you may have had a piece of pipe that's broke down. Sometimes when we clean the sewer, we'll have a piece of tile or something, you know, that's, that's gone out there, so, but, you know, it's still working, but in the long term, it could, could fail, so it needs to be addressed. So I'd, I'd say that's a, a, you know, a high priority or something we could need to address. <coughs> Is there any way that we can at least get a ballpark idea of what kind of money we're talking about without having to bring in an engineer? Oh, well, what we can do is uh, I've got the name of some companies and they could come out and give us a you know, proposal or something like that. And just kind of talk to them and say, hey, this is what we got. You know, what, what would you charge to do, you know, 100 feet here? And, you know, that, that's, what, that's what can be costly. The setup time for doing a line on in situ form, which is relining it, you know, to do you know, 100 feet is the same as doing 300 feet. You know, the time to set up, excavate, get all the equipment in there. So the only difference is the cost of the liner length and you know, cutting the holes in there. So, surely the damage, the worst part, of, the worst lines would be in the oldest part of town, wouldn't it? Well, most of our line, yeah, right. I mean, any, any additions has got the newer, you know, right. newer pipe in there. We've got well, what I've learned is if you could, you could sort that out, and maybe not just do a section, but do do like a run, so so that you're not just putting a patch on a on a problem that's going to have to be re the whole thing's going to have to be re replaced another 10, 15 years, say, or have more problems. Instead of doing that, to me, it'd make more sense to just fix that whole, say, take a three or four block run, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and actually work on that section and replace it <coughs> or fix it, whatever you got to do to it. But instead of just putting patches on, I mean, you can put an old patch on an old roof, but you still have an old roof. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, eventually, if you want a long term deal, I mean, you need to, to fix the whole thing. To me, I mean, take our worst areas and start, and actually either replace it or or fix the whole thing so that you ain't doing this section this year and next year we're coming back 100 foot away from that and then doing another section that wasn't quite as bad as this one. To me, that seems like a waste. And like you said, for the setup time and, and getting somebody out to do it and the inconvenience for the citizens, to me, it'd be make more sense just to do a whole run or whatever you want to call it or, or a certain amount of blocks, whatever. I wonder if... <clears throat> and that's why I was wondering if you could correlate it to, you know, if your worst damage is in the older part of, whatever the older part of this town is. I mean, if you could just start there and then you just work towards the newer stuff. I mean, we've got uh, most of our, you know, all our old pipe is vit vitrified clay tile, which mm -hmm. is it's good. I mean, look how many years it's lasted, but you've got a lot of times you'll have cracked bells and that's where your roots get in and once they get in, you, you've got more damage and everything. So, uh, but you know, material wise, it's pretty inert piece of piece of material that nothing really affects it other than the weight of the dirt and the roots. Right. And so it'll be there for a long, long time. But I mean, I agree with what you're saying. It's, it's just a matter of, of uh, Probably getting a bad run and just say we're going to do this whole section and be done with it. Not right. Well, I'm not but saying if, replace it, but I'm saying twenty years later, it's it's your money ahead. So, right. so 
but I can get with uh, you know some vendors on that do this type of work and you know, see what uh, you know, what they would recommend as far as doing it. So, but, uh, yeah, we've got videos and some some areas we know we can just start on and say, hey, what are we looking at to do? Here? From uh, John, did you get the um, estimated loan payment on the nitrate removal plant? Well, there's still some variables that are out, but it's quite a bit less than um, what we had talked about. It, the biannual payments that was um, set up, you know, preliminary, was $79,934.09. Without things being quite complete, we're looking at about 68000 biannual, so about $20,000 less a year than we had anticipated before. And it could be less than that, but I don't want to put that Does number that out factor there. factor in the yeah. three-quarter of a million dollar payment? Pardon me? Does that factor in making that three-quarter of a million dollar payment? No, that's our final when they do the final bit. So until we get that, we won't know. So that'll bring it down some more, but not... <clears throat> and what are we at right now, about two and a half million? We are at... Well, what their projected cost is uh, 2828422243 We're currently at 2, 2645343 what we're still waiting on is basically that fence. Okay. And then there's a couple of things, Mel, right, with the wells still that we haven't, we haven't got our final pay estimates on those yet. Yeah, we just, the two new wells, uh, we're waiting on the factory logical to come back. We're going to have to do rechlorination on one of those, so, but they're, they're operational. So when we make the the big payment towards this thing, does that is that going to drop our biannual payments? Well, what I understood was that we were going to make the big payment, and and that would pay off quicker, and we would still go with the same. We would just be paying ahead, okay. using the same payment amount. Okay. Otherwise, because they're going to complete the loan work when everything's done, right. and so that would be set. And then we'd do the lump sum payment, okay. and then we'd just consider that we're that far ahead, but we would still have the same biannual payment amount, okay. so we could pay off quicker. That was my understanding <coughs> of what council well, was. I believe you're right, but the reason we did that was because if we did anything prior to loan completion, then we lost the forgiveness on that part, the way I understood it. Well, um, Actually, since they changed the loan forgiveness rule, you know, when they first started, it was going to be just on construction. Then they have decided to go ahead and do it for the other parts, too. So we've gone back, and I'm going to submit for reimbursement on the stuff that we already paid for, like um, with um, um, Evans EBH, we paid 78000 out of pocket that was towards the nitrate removal project, but we decided to go ahead and do that so we weren't paying interest on it, because we had it. So I'm going to, Don told me to go ahead and take those, and um, anything else that we paid for out of pocket that had to do with the nitrate removal plant, not all the studies and stuff before it, but once it was decided, and go ahead and submit for a reimbursement on that, so it, we get the loan forgiveness. You know, if they decide not to give it to us, fine, we just turn around and pay it back. If they do, then, you know, we'll get that money. We're not going to have that much interest in this short period of time, and we pay it off, too. I'll have to do another budget amendment, but that's, that's small potatoes compared to what we might be able to make on that extra 30% if they'll give us the loan forgiveness. So between loan forgiveness and actual making the loan, can we make a payment then? Because the way I understood it, we couldn't. No. Well, they, when the project is complete, they'll let us know what kind of loan forgiveness we have. Uh -huh. 
and then then they'll put that into the amortization, and then we'll make our lump sum payment. Okay, but I mean, financially though, if we could make that lump sum payment prior to the actual loan making, we'd be money ahead. It's not going to make any difference as far as how much money we're financing because that would. well you're going to take it off the top when you pay it anyway as soon as right. we have it we're going to pay it it just make the difference on how much our payment would have to be where it comes in is if we make a lump sum payment now 30 percent of that seventy seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars is lost because Right, that's, I understand that, but what I was wondering is in between actual, them saying you got $2.8 million, we're going to give, forgive 30% of that, right. take that 30% off, and then knock off the 750 and then just... Amortize the rest right. of it. I don't think it'll work that way. I think they'll want to okay. to finish the well, project out. I mean, that's the way I thought to begin and with. And the total like loan. But. Yeah. As long as we make sure that that seven hundred fifty thousand dollars goes against the principal and principal only. Well, it'll go, it'll go against whatever interest is secured at that point. Yeah, it'll take care of the interest first, which should be a very small, very small. As soon as we have the, the, the numbers and the completion and everything, we can turn around and write the check. Your your percentage of interest will be included in the amortization sheet when you make that payment. Right. That three quarters of a million dollars should go strictly to the principal. No interest occurred because your interest that's that's made on the loan will already be figured into that loan. Am I wrong? Hey, once when they do the roll from construction to permanent financing, you no, know, you're right. That seven hundred fifty thousand dollars is going to go, and it was voted on at this table against the principal. We'll make sure that occurs. Thank you. Okay. From a capital improvement project standpoint, it sounds like our priority right now is going in and working on some of the worst of the sewer areas. Am I correct in that? Mm -hmm. So now you're going to okay. check, check into that for me. All right, great. Um, would it make sense to go back through some of those areas that you phoned several years ago and do a <coughs> phoning project? Well, we, do, we, we have a list of when we did them, and you know, there, a lot of them are due. I'll admit that they're, they're due to be done again. And we've got the material to do it. Like I say, it's a matter of getting it done. And so uh, probably come spring or getting better weather. <coughs> Is there anything else we want to talk about as far as capital improvement is concerned? Where are we on, on electricity? Poles? Lines? Well, that, that's what I was saying earlier. We, we're better shape than a lot of towns, but it's just you know, kind of an ongoing thing. As, as the poles age, we, we try and get them done before they break off. Sometimes that doesn't happen, but you know, that's, that's just be a matter of, uh, you know, we've got another guy on now, so we'll be able to do more of that and just try and stay ahead of it. So uh, it's just kind of an ongoing thing as we see a pole getting to the point where it's you know to the end of the serviceability, and we'll go ahead and change it out ahead of time. We've got some areas in town that uh, uh, you know we've done a lot of reconductoring or some reconductoring on on lines where we had the old copper wire going down the alley or something like that. We switched some of them out. That's just an ongoing project, and like I say, as long once we get up to speed a little bit more with the new guy, we can hopefully do more of that. So we've gotten uh, back when Nick was here, we we had a program where we, a lot of the uh, transformers didn't have a cutout on where we could isolate them, and now we've got got that done. So that's that's a big help. So you know, we have to work on that. We don't have to cut out of you know on a larger section of line, just mostly in an individual type area. Everyone. 
What about our inventory of poles? Well, we got quite a few poles enough to get us through down the road of six months or a week or ten years or just an average amount. It just depends on how, how many, how many storms know. we have, I realize. Yeah, but do we have an amount of poles? Or? Yeah, we keep some on there every once in a while. I, you know, I come to council and say we're getting low and we need right. some more poles. That's how many poles have we got? I, not Right now, I think we're in pretty good shape, but I can't tell you. I've got you know, how many, you know, 40s and 35s. We keep a pretty good inventory of all sizes when we get low. You don't keep track of that inventory? Well, we've got a yearly inventory, but, you know, we know exactly, you know, just by visual, we know with, with the work we've done, if we change out three poles and use 35 footers, so well, we've only got three left, then we, we do it. But as far as... But know, is that three poles, is that a is that about what we've got, or...? No. Oh, there's over 50 poles down there. Yeah, we've oh, got, that, a, lot of, we got a lot of poles down there, yeah. but I can't say we've got 50 poles. I'm I understand that, but that's a long ways from three. Yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying, we, when we get down to a, a point where we say, well, that's not very many, we'll go ahead and I'll come to the council and say, I need a load of poles, and then we can usually mix and match, you know, to a degree of, of certain sizes. Right. So. I just tried to see if we had enough poles to get, get us here, whether we're going to have enough for six months or whether we're going to have enough get us through the winter. Yeah. We have an ice storm, you know, that changes everything. I realize that, but if we only had three poles now, we're well, in trouble. I just use that for an example. So we get down to so low, then, you know, to a point where we reorder, we don't let ourselves run clear out. So. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we maintain those lists somewhere? Are they handwritten lists? Are they on a, are they in a spreadsheet? As far as I'm Poles. That's mm -hmm. it. We do at the, we do a yearly inventory, and then just as far as uh, you know, it's an on-site type thing. As far as you know, what we have is on hand. So okay. it's, it's not it's it's a handwritten type. Well, the water department do handwritten, and as far as what we have, and then all electric. It's on usually they will put it on a computer deal. You know, so is there that, is there a magic number that you kind of that you, every year at that time when you look, is, it, is there a kind of a magic number that you've got in your head? Well, like I say, it just depends on the size of the pole. As far as this, the number, I can't say a dozen or whatever. We, we've never run out of poles and we don't plan on it. So it's just to be a matter of, you know, like I say, we know what we have. We use three or four, so well, we're getting low. We'll so that's, that's, that's the way it works. So we don't, you know, like do a job and then take it off of a, an inventory or anything. I mean, the poles are right there. They're easy to see, you know, as far as what we have on there. So, well, as far as your other inventory, do you, have, do you have a running inventory sheet? Not a running inventory sheet. We just, you know, we do a yearly inventory, and then we've got, you know, all our parts are in, bolt in bins and stuff like that. And the guys, the same way we do with the water, we get down so low, but we've only got two or three of these left. We order some more. So, right. But there, there's, so at no point you can just go. John, I need to know what the inventory is of insulators or, or poles or whatever without actually going and counting. Right. We do not have a system where when inventory comes in, it's, it's increased. And then when a job is done where we get a repair order that says we need to take this off, right. we don't have that kind of system. So there's also no system to check to see whether anything's disappearing without. I mean, yeah. I mean, or, or making a sheet. There, there's nothing that says these poles went to, to block such and such. No. So, so that at some point, I mean, to me that would be helpful to know so that you could, I mean, you said we've replaced all the poles on the first street except such and such block or whatever. I mean, there is software that helpful. will do that, and it keeps inventory of all your meters, and, but it's pretty expensive, and then you have to have somebody that can input the information to keep it correct. So, I mean, it's not an automatic point-and-shoot kind of thing, you know, like scanning something when it comes in and scanning something when it goes out. Somebody has to sit down and say, well, we put what this... We have to do too. Well, I know, but we're talking about a large number of, of items in and out. I don't know your business, <laughs> yeah, know. so I'm not trying. But I'm just saying that it would be pretty time intensive, first of all, to get it set up. Second, we checked into this a while back, and I brought it to the table, and nobody was interested. So 
um, if you're interested in that again, um, you can let us know and I can look into that and see if there's been any new companies or anything on that. Well, I don't understand why we couldn't just develop a spreadsheet and keep track of it on a spreadsheet. I don't know why we have to go out and buy software. Well, if you want to know where it is, if you want to know a whole, you know, I, I think it would be... Well, if you bring so many pulls in, it depends on how they tell you so many pulls went out. Oh, well, you, but yeah. you were saying you wanted location. If you want just a basic well, I'm just, inventory. I'm just saying, yeah, that, but that could be done also as a... One of the things you that know, you can do in a spreadsheet that the mayor is talking about is if we have one person coming in that brings items in, one person checks it up, who brings it into the inventory, put it in there, put which location it's going to be in stored. When it goes out, you put what job it's going to be, which area it's going to be in, how many were used, and then that's be subtracted from your inventory amount. So I mean, that's something that we can do. I did, did inventory when I worked at a company in California, so it was pretty simple to run something like that until we got that type of point of um, sale mm -hmm. system that you were talking about. So. Where I was headed with that, part of my thinking wasn't pertaining to inventory, is the price of everything is going up severely and going to continue to go up. What I was trying to figure out, if he doesn't know it until the day before he needs poles, he comes to the council and he says, I need a semi-load of poles, which used to cost, what's it cost now? $4,000 for a load of poles? Oh, I don't know if it's quite that much, but yeah. You know, say that. now it's 4000 10 years from now it may be 20000 and he walks in here and says, I need a load of poles. 20000 10 years from now, maybe damn hard to go. That's where I was headed. But, you know, some things are better, you know, your, your poles, if they're setting out in the weather, if you have, if you're not going to use poles for 10 years, they're 10 years older than the ones you buy. Right, right I'm things. aware of that, Bill. But so, what, I, what I'm saying, the money end of it, if they would have to double. Yeah, but I mean. And there might be a time when you didn't, the council ain't got $20,000 laying here to buy poles with. Right. I'm looking down the road 10 years. 15 or 22. You could even just go as far as a year and the prices can change exactly. I mean, from month to month or day to day. So. Well, I thought that's what this was for financial. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm just looking at dollars and cents is all I'm looking at. I mean, we've already seen, this is off the subject, we've already seen what health care has done in the last two years. Went through the roof. There's no sign that you go into superinflation that a poll that cost twenty dollars today couldn't cost three hundred dollars tomorrow. That's thinking way outside the box, but it's not a, not impossible. I'm sorry. No, that, that's okay. That's the whole point of this is to open the conversation up so that we can talk about things that are concerning to us individually as council members and concerning to us for the community. And there's a lot of validity to what you just said, you know? And honestly, we need to have some kind of inventory system set up. Whether it, whether, I don't know that it needs to be so detailed as we need to know what job it went to, but I do think we need something that says, okay, on this date, this much came in, on this date, this much went out. On this date, this much went out. On this date, this much came in again. This is what we should have sitting in a bin or out on a piece of property somewhere. Because, let's face it, this is a time where people don't think twice about going and stealing things. And anything that's metal that can be scrap has the potential to lock off if it's not locked down. You know, so if, and, you know, I, I worked for a big municipality, a big city, and we kept it at warehouse. And we, ha and I was in charge of making sure the inventory got done every year and supervised the employee, the storekeeper, and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Inventory is a nightmare. They eventually, they did away with it and quit running the warehouse operation and save the staff costs and whatever. But we still need to be tracking 
what we've got and making sure that there isn't pilfering going on or somebody that we don't know has a key to a building still is coming in and taking stuff and we're not aware of it. You know, like I said, I don't think we need to get it to the point to where we're running work orders and trying to keep track of what's gone where. So accountability is but, where you're going. Yeah, accountability is exactly where I'm going. You know, I think in good conscience, we're talking about taxpayers' money that's tied up in inventory and whatever. We need to use some due diligence in keeping track of those things. You know, and if it means somebody's got to put in an extra hour a month and it's overtime, I think it's money well spent because it doesn't take long for water meters to walk off or electric meters to walk off. You know, you take one water meter and they're probably, what, about 45, 50 bucks now? Or an electric meter, which I would have no idea. I mean, and this all goes back to what we hear from the, the auditors and stuff every year, you know. We, we can't really run a, quote, locked facility, you know, where nobody can get in out. Like, you may have had, like, a warehouse or something like that. You know, people go in and they've got somebody in charge, I need this, and mm -hmm. we're not really set up that way, and I, I wouldn't really, and I agree with what you're saying as far as, I don't think we necessarily need to work order and all that kind of stuff. I mean, but I, I we do a yearly inventory, and... You know, your big ticket items, you know, uh, that's what we keep track of. We don't keep track of everything, that's what we've got in the parts bin. But, I mean, the, the, the larger items that's, that's there, the water meters, the fittings, and the stuff in the electric department, we do keep track of that. It's a, just a yearly thing to see where we're at. You know, if we get set up to where, you know, we get you know, 20 poles in, and, and then if you want to do a monthly thing, and say, well, you know, this is what we've got today, and we say, well, we're... 20 poles short will have to, I mean, you know, something like that. But. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Without any record of what you've done, there's no way you can tell me what you did within 20 poles a year from now. There's no way you can tell me what you did with two water meters. I mean, it's it's not a hard process to, to write down when your guys go out a simple piece of paper that says they put in two poles on such and such deal I mean, it, it can. We do. We do it when we spray a field. We have a, one simple sheet that tells everything that went on that field, uh, who did it, the time it took, and the other information that we got to have that wouldn't pertain to this. But the other reason that that would be helpful is when we were uh, arguing about the water or the electric rates and and our maintenance fees and everything else that we have on there. I kept asking in council for weeks, I want to know the average cost per meter on maintenance fee. have no idea. This would be a very simple system to come up and say, it cost us an average of uh, whatever, $1,000 per meter for maintenance per year to run this electric system or whatever. I mean, you'd be able to come up with that, that figure or a lot closer figure than I don't know. And that way we'd actually know whether we're covering costs and stuff like that instead of just guessing. I mean, to me, it's not that hard of a system. I mean, we have, we have one, one girl that does everything for us, our, our inventory, our maintenance, I mean, our billing and everything. I understand that they have a boatload to do, but it's not that tough of a system to do. And she just does it on a spreadsheet. As far as our... As far as our complete running inventory, she actually does have a, a program because it runs off of them spray sheets. But she also has a just a, a handwritten in, a spreadsheet that she keeps of what come in and what we told her went out. And then, then we match them to that as an overall. But, I mean, the way we are right now, we have no idea what our maintenance costs are. Like on it, if you want to average it per meter or anything like that, you can say, yeah, the whole deal's this, but we don't have any man hours to that. What our guys are spending on electric compared to water or compared to putting up Christmas lights or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So there's there's no way to actually figure our <coughs> cost per department. I understand what Troy's saying. 
Is that sheet something you'd be willing to share with me? Yeah. Okay. And that would be a way of yeah. tracking what it costs per meter per year for maintenance. And if yeah. you don't have that figured into the electric bill, then we're not going to, down the road, we're not right. going to be. Or if we're collecting two times what it's costing us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is where I actually think we're more at than the other way. <laughs> and if, if but maybe not. I mean, I have no, but in what is, every time I've asked, nobody can tell me. So. And if you had that, once you got it started, then you could go back from year to year and look and see how we're running this year compared to last year. Do a comparison. And if you're way down or you're way up, then you can make adjustments to do to take care of it. The way we have now, we have no way to make any adjustments on certain high areas of the city. Because we don't know what the what the factor was before. I've got a simple spreadsheet that I look at once a month. It's got three things on it. It's got receivables and, and, and money in the bank. Just three columns. I look at that every month, once a month, and I can tell you what that business is doing. Period. And do it in about three minutes. And if it's one's out balance, well, if your receivables are down, the money better be in the bank. If it's short on both ends, you better see what went wrong. At one time, John, I think I asked you about our billing process, and I, if I, and it's been a while back, so I may not remember it correctly. Okay. But it seems like you told me it takes Donna two weeks to get stuff into the system to be able to process a billing. They do the readings on like the 14th, 15th, and by the time she gets everything, um, of course, we hand, we subtract each reading. Right. So that's two, water and electric for each premise, and then that has to be entered into the system, and then she goes back and does a report. It says, you know, it gives her the high readings and stuff so they can go out and do rereads. Um, she has move outs and moves ends, you know, before she can do billing. And there's several steps to it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, by the time she's ready to actually, I mean, it's, it's a push sometimes to get them out the last day of the month. And, of course, that depends on where it falls, weekends and stuff like that, too. But I don't know what it would cost but I think it would be beneficial for us to look into what it would take to do um, some kind of electronic read system. I mean, I realize it would mean replacing every meter, every water, and every electric meter in town in order to <coughs> make it work. Um, Actually, I talked to somebody at, there's vendors at our clerk's stuff, and um, I don't totally understand all the meters and stuff, but I knew I know there's some new technology out that has pads on it, and it might be you still have to walk by and touch it, but you don't. So I mean, there's there's a lot of different technologies out there. So you could go anywhere to step outside the door and get a radio read from the whole town, and dump it into the system, or drive by stuff or touch stuff. Yeah, and I'm I'm more looking at it from the other end of it, as in. Then they bring it in and it gets plugged into the computer mm -hmm. and it automatically does the addition and subtraction and kicks out the reports that says this is way high, this is way low, you know, that, that's more the line I'm looking at it because whether they're walking the meters or driving by or whatever, you're still going to have basically the same amount of time involved in doing the meter read. I would guess. Well, they're not going to have to stop and write those numbers in right. and physically put. And that's another thing. Sometimes it's just hard to see mm -hmm. in those water holes. So, yep. you know, the rereads are yep. probably a lot higher. There's, like what you're saying, there's different technology. You can you have a, you can just set up on a drive-by. You just drive a truck down the street as it goes by, picks up the readings on all your meters, records them, come back to the office, plug it in, and there it is. You can also... St. John, I talked to one guy, might be small enough that we wouldn't even have to, it's, you know, cost effective to do it or not, but we could probably set up a, a tower and everything would just, time to do the building, punch the button and everything comes in the office. You don't even have to drive by, everything's 
sent, just sent to the office at that time. You can walk by and do a touch read. You know, the elders meet and just touch a deal and it records it. You know, and, and you, don't have to, you don't have a human element of writing it down or anything like that. That's gone. And then you just get back. So the technology is out there. Some meters, uh, you can retro, you know, they've got a new head that puts on them. You have to go out and, and you know, do some work on the meter itself and then put it on the lid for a, for a touch read or a radio read or something like that. The technology is out there. It's just a matter of, of wanting to, to spend the money and how much money you want to spend. Of course, the savings is what you want to look at. Is that something that council would be interested in looking at and possibly pursuing? I think so. Yeah, it's going to save somebody two hours or two weeks a month out of the No, it won't schedule. save two weeks a month. It'll save, I mean, because there's other processes in that. It'll save for a good three or four days, so. And I think it'll save the guys. Yeah. I mean, they're out walking the meters. And, I mean, the other side of that is, is if we save Donna three or four days a month on billing, then that frees her up to do things like keep track of inventory or, you know, whatever. I will or, say Donna is just, I mean, when we went to cashiering and banking, that added so much on in there that if we add something on, it'll probably come into my office because it's it's full everywhere else. And if we... If we take that off of Donna, she may have a little bit of time to be more efficient in what she is doing. She's kind of putting out a fire, the hottest fire right now. So she's, she's keeping her head above water with the new changes as they come in, but I don't think that's something we would add on in her place. We would just try to absorb it between the three of us if we had to add something else in. I think if you go completely automated, you need to look into the salary to offset it. If you're going to speed things up that, that much, eventually you're going to cut a job out of the equation, I think. Well, I, I don't think several days, as far as our meter reading, you know, some guys are tied up for one day, and other guys, you know, like three days or whatever, depending on if they got two books or whatever it is. But that's not going to really equate to doing away with the whole job as far as on our end of it. So, well, it's definitely something that can be looked at somewhere down the line. But if you can't, if you can't cut something out from the equation for the cost it takes to make it automated, I suggest we stay one way we do. But you know, I'm saying if, if, if you save, reading. if you save, you know, all of my guys for for two or three days a month, add that up over a year's time. But like I say, right. there is going to be a savings, and then savings in the office, you have to add. I think add that all together. Is it is it cost effective to do it that way? Exactly. If the automated system is saving that much time. Well, yeah. but just because we spend. Compared to what Kevin's saying, I mean, I don't agree with that. We we can't drop. I mean, if we buy that, it's not like we can just say we bought this and we're eliminating this guy. Right. I, I mean, I the reason we're buying this or looking at this system is maybe saves Mel two guys two days, her one lady three days, whatever, and the time and the efficiency and the the uh, correctness of it. That's that's a that's a big factor. I mean, but what, it's, it's easy to write down. Then that's number. then that's making us this much money, or that's saving us this much money. But I mean, some of those also then, detect. Then you can also say um, that she can spend this much time on some other project, or he can spend this time on this other project. I mean, you, you won't be able to eliminate a, a job just because of it, though. Because right. I mean, we don't have somebody hired just to read meters, and we don't have somebody hired just to do. Yeah, that probably. one task in the office, either. Mm -hmm. I understand what Kevin says, but I agree with you. But as long as it justifies the cost of the automation, somewhere else is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the big picture over a long period of time, you know, this much every year you're going to save, you know. Uh, and they've, they've even got technology. I went to one uh, workshop deal. They've even got it so you can turn people's electric off and on at their house, water meter, you can turn the water on from the office. 
I mean, that's, that's clear out of there for us, but I'm just saying that the technology is just unbelievable what they can do. And they can, they'll get a reading if, they, if someone's got a slow leak or, or something like that on their water meter, it'll, it'll show up on the, at the office on the computer screen. And it's just, it's amazing. But it's all for dollars. So. Okay. But if you could look into yeah. getting some costs on that, yeah. or if you need John or I to help you with that, just let me know. I mean, just, and I know it's all going to be the dollars. What, what, what do you think we are going to look at, or what would you think would be the best benefit? And it's probably uh, a. I know Stafford right now is is getting set up. They they uh, qualified for a grant and part of their upgrade. I think John, are they just doing electric right now, or? Yes, they, you know, they're doing all their poles and the power plant, you know, had the fire. And this is through Chris Nagley that's, you know, came and talked to us. We didn't have the kind of work that needed to be done to, to, to make us eligible. But, um, yeah, they're going, I think they're doing the radio read. Is For some reason, I, I was thinking they were getting the radio read. But, I, but is it on electric and handles? water or just electric? Handhelds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they they already have handhelds, oh, I think, okay. but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, they, we might check in to see what you know what you know. We're we're using Chris too, and maybe he can help us in that regard. Okay. We'll, I'll check into it. <clears throat> yep. See what the best route is for. If us. we don't know how much it's going to cost us, we don't even have a starting place. Right. So. Okay. Is everybody ready for a five minute break, or do we want to keep going? I like the break idea. Okay, let's take a five minute break. <coughs> <coughs> Did you have it plugged in? No, I didn't even try. <laughs> Did you put yours inside with this cold or plug it in? Are these, did Julianne bring these or do you, do you know? I don't think she brought them, but we could okay. use them. Or even, do you know if there's any napkins? Uh, not down here, I don't know. Oh, here's a few napkins. But yeah. I don't know if there'd be any in the uh, cabinet. Oops. 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 Oops.
come in and, and sit down with Mel and they go through the insurance list that we have and see what, you know, make sure that we've gotten everything added that normally we just call them when we have a new piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. So that's just a double check that he usually comes in, sits down with Mel and goes through the list that he has. Okay. Uh, I don't think this list is complete. Shouldn't the fire trucks be on here? That, that's just my department. That's the public works. I didn't do the only thing for that. So. Our equipment list should have every, every police car, every mm -hmm. fire department. Yeah. Do you have an inventory sheet anywhere? Yeah. We've got it upstairs, um, which I didn't. I didn't. I didn't ask Adam. No, I was just asking. Yeah, we had, just like Mel did a few years ago with the auditors, and they came through and told us they wanted us to inventory. Um, and ours, because of, you know, obviously because of the equipment we carry goes from, you know, all the way down from the cars to ammunition and everything, office equipment and all that stuff. Okay. Would it be possible for one of the ladies in the office to 
take and create a combined equipment list for all of the city departments and have it in electronic format? It won't be tomorrow. Oh, I don't expect it to be. It'll be a work in progress. Okay. okay, what do we anticipate is going to need to be replaced in the near future? The only thing that I can see immediately, or say immediately, within the next, I mean, the next year would be great, but two or three years is the uh, digger truck. It's, a, it's an 86. Uh, do the age of it, and just, you know, we've had some brake issues, and we've got to fix it and everything, but this is a matter of the age and, and needing to update. Uh, it, it's time. Uh, so if we were going to schedule something to be replaced, uh, and, you know, it's an important piece of equipment, so I think that's probably would be our next next thing we want to look at. How many hours a year do you put on that digger truck? Very, very few. I mean, not, not that many. I mean, you can, depends on our work and everything, but you know, the, the bucket truck goes out a lot, the digger truck, usually if we change out a transformer, reset a pole, it's, you know, it's far I mean, On an average, 20 hours a year? I don't know. Oh, you want that. It just depends, yeah, I mean, that's just a couple days, so I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, if we're doing a job that's out there the whole time, it's actually, actually Well, the just because time, it's sitting there, though, doesn't mean that. Right, but it it's, could be running or whatever, but actual work time, I don't know. You know we, don't, we don't keep track of how many actual hours we you know, achieve, but it, it sets in the, in the shop more than anything as far as in the, in the electric park. So. And it's, it's only got 40,000 miles on the actual truck? Yeah. It, what is some of the major things that's wrong? What, what's your reasoning behind it? Well, it's got. Uh, like I say, age is one thing. The truck itself, even getting parts for it, when we had to, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's, it's called. It was up on the uh, uh, master cylinder. It's the way that's set up on there. We had, it, it was a little difficult getting parts for that. And, you know, it's, it's boosters, which you had to replace them. Something on there. I can't remember exactly, but I'm, I'm just saying an 86, an 86 you can look at. I and mean, there's going to be a point where you may not be able to get, get what you want. It's got a... It, right now, one of the issues is, and I'm not saying it can't be fixed, is uh, uh, the the winch on the thing. You know, to to bring something up and down, you usually just use the boom rather than, than the winch itself, as far as that. So I mean, it's not something that can't be fixed. I'm just saying, just just from the age of it and parts and everything. Yeah, we could get by with another five years if we have to. I mean, it's just. I was asked to what I recommend. And right. Yeah. I'm just. Know. I'm just asking. Yeah. We're not. Well, I, no. I'm just saying. Just... But I'm saying you know as well as I do with equipment. You can. You can <coughs> as long as you can get the parts, you can fix it. Right. Okay. But there's going to be a time, sometime or another, you may not be able to get the parts, and there, there, there you sit. So it's just a matter of, uh, you know. But is it is it primarily the truck? <coughs> truck, but it's both, both the truck, as far as age on some of the, you know, if we have an issue with that, and the uh, the actual boom and Derek and all that stuff. I Is mean, it also a 1986? Everything was bought together, yeah, as far as I know. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Kevin, you bought a used one on I mean, Yeah, I was going to give you food for thought. I just updated mine to a 2002. It's got 10,000 hours on it. Yeah, and ours is 5,900. Yeah. So yeah, how much is a used truck? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, my truck's got 125,000. Right. I mean, I understand what he's saying as far as needing to replace it, but man, that just I'm not shaps sure me to have to spend that kind of money to spend, you know what I'm saying, when you're spending that kind of money for something that we may only use 20 hours a week or 20 hours every six months. I mean, I have no idea. Right. But, that that is the basically various. you want me to use my truck to sell their poles. Okay, I'll do that. No, can't do that. No. Yeah, no. It's it's just I the analogy. It's just like the fire department on trucks. I mean, fire, fire right. trucks usually die of old age. It ain't because of the number of miles oh, yeah. they drive. So this is a little bit like that. There's just some point or another you need to update and. Yes, we can we can spend money on it and just keep it. But all this so this up here, I spent. Thirty thousand dollars. 
get that truck. And I would really have this truck. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let them have that headache. And I haven't operated these 1986. My 83, you know, was pretty well shot. When you bought it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one here's only got 40,000 miles on it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. um, is there any other over, say, $40,000 piece of equipment that we're going to need to replace in the next three to five years? Oh, you know, at some point or another, and the loader is still good. Uh, you know, we've had some issues, and once again, we fixed it. We just put new tires on it, so uh, I'm not really pushing for that. But if <coughs> what I've seen in not just St. John is that when you buy a new piece of equipment, usually you're going to have it till you know, we don't, we don't have a program of keeping the pickup for five or ten years when it's dead, it's dead. Same way with, with everything else is, you know, most of our stuff, well, I mean, there's a perfect example, 1986 Ford, of course, it, you know, not used much, but uh, same thing with our loader, backhoe and everything, just running until there's nothing left, pretty much. We don't really look at it as far as trading value, you know, uh, if we want to, then we want to look at it that way, we've got a good set of tires and not have a piece of equipment that's operational or do we wait until something major goes wrong and say, well, we're not going to put any more money in that old piece of, that old loader, you know, you want to take a good on some tires. So now's the time that it's operational and it's got decent tires. If you keep it two or three years, you've got some good out of your tires and still if nothing else major is going on, you've got something to, 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 to pedal or trade in or whatever. So, but it's not that they can't do the job. Other than that, pickups and everything, like I say, uh, we've got that old 66 board dump. Uh, it's, you know, we've got, we got the third dump truck and we had some brake issues on it and so we just parked it and we don't even use it. At some point or another, we just need to, I uh, we have a, we've got some other stuff. I think you may have some stuff added, maybe the fire department, but if anybody had anything, we could have a, you know, make up a list and, take bids on or have an option, whatever you guys think would be the best way to do it, just get rid of some of this stuff, you know. Can, uh, I mean, in the near future, can all the department heads make a list, then, of what equipment they don't need? Yeah, or what, what you course. recommend to get rid of? Yeah. I mean, we've got that truck, we've got the old air compressor, you know, just, just things like that, you know, that we could put on a list. It might be a value to somebody. It's just no value to us right now. So, uh, you know, we can, we can Does that old air compressor work? No, no. Okay. What's wrong with it? Well, it's, the, it's, I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a, it uses a, an engine, a V8 engine, to make, make air. There's not, you know, it's not a rotary or anything like that. So, it's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's such old, t and it, that's a, a, a perfect example. We couldn't get parts to fix it. Right. So. Well, I understand that. I just, so I'm just saying that's no, it's it's, it's way beyond anything. So other than that, we can get by with, with what we have and the, the pickups and all that stuff are okay for right now. And, and so, yeah. The sewer machine is still works works all right. I've seen some of the newer sewer machines and kind of like Kevin and his. I'd rather have ours than some of the other ones I've seen. So. We're okay. The mosquito sprayer, we, I bought uh, a number of years back. I was at Federal Surplus in Topeka, and they had a brand new, or it might have been used one time, a mosquito sprayer. They didn't even know what they had. They just got it in off the truck. It was sitting out there, and I saw that. And they said, well, we don't even know what we're going to want for it yet. So I think I got it for like $300. It's probably worth about six, eight thousand. So it's just we got it up on the rack. Wait, I mean, we can use parts off of it or if I put a new one. It's, it's, it's exactly like what we have now. So, but anyway, so we're in good, we're in reasonable shape on that. So. Okay, so if I wanted a complete list of all the equipment in the city, I would need to talk to the fire department, the police department, and email. Would that give me everything? I'm not looking for office furniture or that kind of stuff. I'm looking for vehicles and equipment. 
Okay, does any of the council have any recommendations as far as things that they think might need to be replaced or things that we need to hang on to? <coughs> things they'd like to see changed? Well, the only thing I could, we could add to this loader, this high loader, is how old is it? How many hours does it take? How many years does it take to get that many hours? I would think it's, that's in the 80s, I think. Is when we, got there. we bought it new? Yeah. No kidding. It might be, I can't remember how many years old it was. I think it was 96, and they had it, you know, so I'm, I'm guessing it's probably going to be somewhere. I got a 2004, I'll do some crazy with you. Yeah. <laughs> Same loader. Bigger. Oh, yeah. That loader's three times the loader that new one is, I guarantee you that. Because um, I had one just like it. Do you did? <coughs> I've never done what I did. How about the uh, 1995 GMC? Flatbed. Yeah. What do you guys use that for? We use that for our patching. We'll go out and patch roads. We use it when we have a water leak. We, you know, dig up the dirt and put it in there. We haul stuff on it. You know, bring Christmas decorations out. We use it quite a bit. Mel, you have a list of junk here. 1966 Ford F700. Recommend to sell. <coughs> yeah, that's what I was just talking about. Oh, okay. So okay. That's a dump. That's an old dump truck. Yeah. Oh, okay. My mistake. 5400, that's a mower? Yeah. And the 709 is the new one we bought here a couple years ago. What year is that 5400? Oh, I'm not sure. I can find out, but I'm not sure. Didn't we buy a, some kind of a gator or a four wheel drive? No, I wanted to buy one, but you guys one? said no. Huh? <laughs> I wanted to buy one, but you guys said no. It would be the Wit, the Wit Center. Somebody has one. No, the recognition. Recognition. Yeah, oh, the right. very, um, we really appreciate because we use a heck out of it. It's like one eight of it. So. Okay, I'm going to test your memory skills. Oh. <laughs> top of your head, can you give me an idea of what we're paying for insurance for our equipment on an annual basis? And if you can't, that's okay. Our full, I mean, our for our full insurance, it's we do a quarterly uh, payment, what would it? Around $19,000 each quarter. And that does not include the boiler. The boiler is another, what, six? Right. 5000 5000 a quarter? And that's the whole city's insurance, including the linebacker and liability on on you guys. And what about workers' comp? Yes, that's in that. It's how much a quarter? That cover the fire trucks too? That covers the whole city buildings, mm -hmm. the swimming pool, the parks, everything. So to say, you know, for equipment, I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. Like I said, out of left field question, so. On the 95 flatbed, is that flatbed something that could be moved to a new cabin chassis? Is it in good enough shape? We had to. It's in good enough shape. I mean, we've had a few issues with it, but it's still a good truck. So you're not having any issues with the truck either? Okay. Is there anything else with regards to equipment? <coughs> Do you guys consider the city building itself as far as the equipment or? No. No. The building. Why do we have building issues? 
just the age. I mean, I can just tell you our offices upstairs, the, uh, you, can, you can have the thermostat set on 68 degrees, whether it's, I mean, you know, even now in the winter, and that, and that furnace is running almost nonstop just because the windows and stuff up there are, I mean, it's, it's just an old building with, with no insulation and, and probably 40 year old windows. And that was, that was one of the main reasons I moved my office from where it was in the old council room because that particular office in there, the, uh, the air conditioner set on, I had it set on 75 degrees and it would, it would run nonstop throughout the day. And it's just, I mean, it's just kind of, to me, it's, I don't know what's putting replacement windows would alleviate that without um, insulation issues or not. It just seems like it's kind of pouring money down the drain. We've had we, that same guy that I was talking about, can't remember his name, that did the study. They, they were doing an efficiency deal on the city, building and everything, and they came up with a plan for windows, lights, and everything, but never went anywhere. So that's, you know, if you want to get windows, then that's what we need to do. I mean, I, I agree with that. So and I, I think that's something that could be set up. I don't know if you could do like the upstairs windows one year and the downstairs right. windows another year. We've always said, that if we could open our windows, I mean, I do open mine, it's very heavy and I have to stick something underneath it. Um, when the weather's nice, we could not be using the air conditioner, you know, but the, the office itself creates heat. <laughs> it's not just us women. But, um, so we, we do run the air conditioner sometimes as late as November. I think this year in November we had the air conditioner on to have it not be 80 degrees in there. But now that it's getting cool, it's going to be the opposite. So but is everything single pane then? Oh, yeah. They're yeah. probably yeah. original the, windows. They're just the, the cheap aluminum windows like, you know, years ago when they don't fit very good on the bottom they were put on there. They weren't really put on properly as far as that goes. So it's, you know, next to nothing. Really. Are there old enough windows? You could probably... <coughs> You could probably see some savings if you brought somebody in there to reglaze the the glass and stuff. But by and the time fix the stashes. By the fix. time you spend somebody to do that, you could probably. There was some talk about because of the age of the building. I think that's where they came up with um, when we were looking at getting that grant um, that they wouldn't allow us to <coughs> on federal money. We couldn't change those windows out because of the age of the building. So, but I mean, even if you had somebody come in and repair the weight and, you know, pulleys, because most of those ropes are broke, and reglazed and then put decent storm windows on, I think it probably would make a big difference. I mean, we looked into replacement windows on our home and then looked at the storm windows and I can't tell you the difference it made by putting decent storm windows on the, the house, you know. It, it would, couldn't have ever afforded the replacement window, so. Is that something council has any interest in pursuing? Mm, look at it. I mean, see what it you get some estimates. Yeah. Yeah. Take a look. To, me, to me, it would make more sense just to go and replace my window. Yeah. But maybe not. Yeah, yeah, even if you had to do so. four years or whatever. Yeah. Um, can I ask you to take that project on for me? Good. Yeah. Okay. You want estimates? I or? want estimates, yes. Yeah. I just figured I had dropped enough on you right no, now. No, that's all right. I just we had looked at this numerous times, and like I say, it, it's it, I've got a, a contact that we looked at them one other time, and you know, nothing. Didn't do nothing. I'm saying we didn't get it up there. Unless the council has a problem with it too, I'd like to keep it local. Oh yeah. So, yeah, if we can keep it. We've got someone that can do it locally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Even if it takes a little longer. Are you talking someone with a business in St. John? In county, in county, I mean, just local. I mean, I don't want to go to Wichita or Hutch okay. and Great Bend. And, and buy the product local. Okay. Right. If they can get them, yeah. yeah. I'd suggest talking to Chris Salee. I mean, whoever. Well, he works with brick. Your grant to have to put them windows in. You're going to have to have somebody work with brick. 
Yeah, I had Mike Saylor replace all the ones in my rental house. So. Well, Mike is one, I don't care. Yeah, I didn't know whether Mike had any brickwork or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, well, it's any of the replacement windows anymore. You can some of them. You can leave the original case in there, right. and you can just your all your replacement is your, you know, your sash and, and the rest of it. So you don't have to but unless I'm, you have. I'm guessing you're going to find out some of the the, the air is probably coming in between the brick and. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's probably some. And are you going to take that casing out to, to get air seal it the way I see it? Well, we may be able to support a couple of local vendors in the process. Okay. Anything else on equipment? I think the only thing we've got for us is, I, I mean, the, the Crown Vic should, it's got 110000 It should last us at least another couple of years. The Blazer, however, would be nice to replace it one of these days. Okay. It's kind of, I mean, we use it more for skunks and jockeying around vehicles than anything, but it serves its purpose. It's kind of invaluable to you guys aren't having to leave their personal vehicle somewhere else to get, get a patrol vehicle to the road. All right, anything else? Nope. All right. Utility rates. Um, it's probably too early to really be having some of this conversation because right now we don't know where we're at with the nitrate removal plant specifically enough to be able to look at doing some rate analysis and seeing if we're collecting enough or too much or whatever the case may be. Um, I know we've increased the electrical rates in the last two years, is that correct? No, 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 we haven't increased them since 07. September of 07. That's like pulling teeth. Pardon me? It's like pulling teeth. Well, that's because it had been 20 years. Yeah. 20 years that we absorbed all the increase. And it came down to we weren't going to make payroll. So I'm going to assume since it's been six years, almost seven, we're going to be looking at the potential of another <clears throat> rate increase here sometime in the near future. We, our contract is up with Midwest Energy, is it this year, in 2014, correct? Yes. Yeah. Greg is already in some kind of dialogue with them. We have been on pretty much an unheard of contract. And what he's kept that, that, I mean, we're low. You compare, when we buy our... Our electricity, we're buying it a lot lower than anybody else. So how much of a percentage increase are we looking at? Uh, that That is going to depend on what, what Greg can get right worked now, out for us. I don't think it's going to be that much of a change. You know, we've got the biggest, you know, right now the way it works is that you know, right now probably on average about 11 cents is what you know we're charging. You know, we've got the energy cost adjustment. But it, the way our, it's set up right now is, you know, we get sheets daily on what we're going to be paying for electricity. You know, we get it a day ahead of time, what the different times of the day, what, it, what it's going to be. And then with the ECA, the energy cost adjustment, you know, if they raise a price or whatever, we're, 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 we're protected through our rates that we're not going to go in a hole or whatever. Just, you know, we, we pass that along to the customer. So unless they we really change the wholesale deal a whole bunch and that's just, you know, and, and it just depends on what they're buying the power for. So unless there's a, some kind of an astronomical thing out there, the, the, the rates have been pretty good. And that's that's based off of block electricity. Well, it's no, not necessarily. <coughs> just it's a, it's a time, a block of time is when we buy it is right. what the cost that price is good for. But what what changes is, you know, the like during the summertime that's our biggest swing, you know, if they have a shortage or a unit goes down somewhere and they have to buy power from somewhere where they, where they weren't really expecting, that's when we're going to see, you know, the, the biggest change in our ECA. But, but the block of power that we buy up front, the, where, we get, where we get the price increase is the, the uh, over, over the block that we right, buy. Right, yeah. In other words, we I think we share that with Stafford. No. We didn't? 
Well, I thought we talked about at one time sharing a, a, a deal. I mean, we're, none of our power is what was called burn power, but we went through. Uh, Greg uh, has got a deal set up as far as probably what you're thinking of, like a, a half a megawatt for Stafford and a half a megawatt for for us and everything. But once, like I said, I just talked to Greg uh, yesterday about you know this deal here. We're still working on the contract deal on that, and it's just I don't I really don't look for a big change. I really don't. From, from, from preliminary, uh, we had a teleconference thing one time with uh, Midwest and uh, Hayes and whatnot. So I, I don't think we're going to see a super big. Will this be a two year contract again? I don't know what they're going to go for this the time. The last one was a four year, wasn't it? Yeah, Kevin, can you help me out? I can't remember, but. Yes and no. Last electric contract. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, I think it was four years. So. But anyway, yeah, so we're, we're getting it was more. Yeah, because it was a pretty good deal. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so as as it gets closer, we'll know where we're at, and then that would be the time to probably look at this. Yeah. You know. Right now we're doing great. Yeah, I so mean, as far as you know, we're not at a shortage or anything like that. I mean, if we keep on like we are, I don't see any reason to. Yeah, we're push. able to to still move our. Um, 182,000 we transfer to general fund from the water and light fund. So, and that revenue is pretty much out of electric. The water's been, you know, it, it's it's adding for its own thing. So, and we all know the trash rates are getting ready to go up. So, I just have some concerns about our community and the fixed income base of people we have living here and what's going to occur with some of the stuff that's going to start to happen. At that, I'm sorry. Go ahead, at that meeting over at the annex, did they indicate how much it might cost us? We have to make up $88,000 is what Terry keeps quoting. Yeah. Well, I mean, he, he gave the two $2.80, right. you know, number. Um, but I, don't think that's I would state. venture to say that that's going to be on the light side. Yeah, yeah that right. doesn't seem like it would be, be that much. Um, <clears throat> well, yeah. But I didn't know if Nisley had said what. Do you know what his customers pay? They they didn't get into what their customers were paying at the meeting. It was more a case of the county letting us know what they were going to do and. That was pretty much and so good. we're on our own, basically. Basically, the commissioner scapegoated out of it. It's basically what they But did. we're not held to what the county decides either, right? Right. The county's out of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're not out of the uh, landfill, but they're out of the Right. Yeah. Right. But all they're going to do is turn around and build whatever. They're still going to have to pay the tipping fee, but they're just going to turn around and build that to the contractor. To the contractor, and then they're going to turn around and pass it right back to us. So. <coughs> Um, I do think that it might be worth trying to get the mayors to sit down maybe and talk about trying to do something cooperatively. I don't know if that's something that we can do or not, but I think just for the size, I think you're going to get a better cost break if you're dealing with all, or the whole county for that matter, mm -hmm. than if we try and just do it as the city of St. John. That I makes more right. sense. Yeah. And I really hate to see four or five hundred thousand dollars in the county. I would too, absolutely. Right there with you. So, um, but that's something that we need to be thinking about. Um, I don't, <coughs> I don't know the other mayors at all. So, if any of you have contacts in the other communities, and Rob, you, Rob Murrow, is my sure sure yeah. mayor, eventually, and. Uh, Seward is. Uh, is that still fair? Is that fair? Fair, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I know Pete. So, um, and what about Stafford's mayor? Um, is that Taylor? Yeah. It was. You okay. went Jerry. Jerry. Uh, mayor Jerry. <laughs> I can 
My father-in-law can give you the number or who it is. He's on the council. Over Julianne, there. if you want to draft a letter or something, I can put it on letterhead. And okay, yeah, yeah. I, that's probably what I'll do okay. then. Um, but we need to do it soon because that contract is up for us anyway at the end of March. And I mean, if we need to, I don't know, if council might want to think about the possibility of going to a month to month until we can get where we want to be as opposed to buying into a year contract or a two year contract or whatever without having everything nailed down the way we want it. So just again, something to think about between now and the first meeting in January. Donna, did you get some of those proposals? I got nothing back from the only the only responses I got back were from Maxwell and Stafford saying they were interested in the same thing. So I don't know that any of the cities are, <clears throat> a lot of the cities do their own. They have their trash trucks and stuff. Right. The others are done by their county. And so I just don't think there is a lot of requests or proposals, requests for proposals out there. Okay. Um, is there anything else with regards to rates that anybody wants to discuss at this point in time? Thoughts, concerns. How many water meters have we lost since we went with the nitrate removal plant? Hmm. You wouldn't lose any. Your usage may have dropped tremendously, but you wouldn't have lost any water meters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go on your own wells. But they're still going to have to have a water meter. No. Kevin, you probably need any more of that, what, what, like, like catfisher and. Yeah. That. A lot of people just got it for water in their yards and still right. are still mm -hmm. using our drinking water. So right. I, I would say it's more. less than that. Yeah. Yeah. Should be paying you seventeen forty-five. So he's saying three or four or five something like that. Well, I thought we were when we did that they were going to still pay the seventeen forty-five per month. Whether you drilled your own well or not, I thought that's the way the the uh, rules read. Is if I mean, if you're provided, you're able to be provided with water. Your your water meter will still be there. You're just not using I, it. I don't think I don't that passed. Think that's you correct. guys didn't, or something. Like, some water was going to be there. I don't. I thought that's the way that read, but I might be wrong. I think it is the way it read. We just didn't enforce it. Yeah. I would say that's what I thought we went through before was everybody that would be able to be that has water capable of having city water is going I'll to be charged at seventeen forty five whether they use any water or not. I think that was one of the big hubbubs about it because people were having to still pay. Well there's a hundred and ninety <clears throat> difference in meters between your electric and your water. Right, but there's but there's, shops. there's several that don't have city water that don't that ain't able to have it. Well, like some places have shop. two. You know, you have a shop and, and a house, and they're on separate meters sometimes right. for your electric. As I said, a school company has six or ten that are like parking lot lights and that type of thing that are separate accounts that are for the electric meters only. I'll so, pull the ordinance I'll say, on that, and I'll put it I in thought the anybody packet, that was able to just have for your information. city yeah. water would still be charged to 1745. Right. The council didn't want to do it. Didn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, they thought that would be everyone's choice, whether they had a well or whatever. And that's that's my recollection. I'm, I'm I don't remember voting on that. Yeah, we voted. No, we voted. Well, Maybe you weren't there. Huh? <laughs> Maybe you weren't there that day. I don't know. But I, I was say I don't remember voting. As many on that, times as I looked at that's that how we ordinance, were, I don't how the water well. rate was based off of <clears throat> was the current <throat> meters, and then we were going to hold anybody that had water meters. We're still going to pay the seventeen forty five per month for that water meter, whether they used any water or not. That was the minimum. If they right, if they put in any wells or whatever. So what our usage wasn't what it was, but they still paid the seventeen forty five. Basically, I would say that was in place for a municipality to have water and fire protection. Everybody should pay for it. That's right. Yeah, whether you use it or not, 
mean, the truck. Whether and you, you guys use, can change that if it's not the way it is. Off. <clears throat> I mean, if that's not how the ordinance reads now, and you guys decide you want to change that, you can draw up a new ordinance and. Well, to me, that would make sense. That. I mean, I think, it's, I, think it's, every, I think that's the way it read. It but I, I could be wrong. But we just don't enforce it. Well, we might. We I, we I, I think there's not been a decision not to enforce it in the office. Nobody right. said, no, I'm oh, don't as, do that. No, I'm saying as a council, we chose not to enforce it. Right. Because you have to board the highway and give Cody and I and whoever else is. Well, we, we didn't say anything about that. What I'm saying is, is if uh, Bobby here decides he has his own well or whatever, he decides he doesn't want the city water. Come pull my meter. Well, it doesn't matter. You're still going to pay your seventeen forty-five because he wants the same fire protection as the guy across the street that's using city water. I mean, that's part of that fee, or it should be. I mean, to me, that's just it's common sense. I think that's how they work. Well, and that's how I thought it was. So I mean, we we shouldn't be losing water meters. But I don't think we. Uh, if we we just you know, have to avoid length, and it, it, my recollection was that we weren't didn't want to do that. If somebody wanted to go on their own well, didn't want to, we weren't going to charge them. That was yeah. their well, now, the way we, I understood it was we were we were going to charge them the yeah, seventeen forty five. That ordinance says that, but I think the council decided that if they want to go on their own well, they can. Now on the fire protection, you know we have the CI fee CIP, yeah. on your bill that's six dollars a month, and people have to even if they don't have water, they have to have that. And, no, and still... our reasoning on that was the fire protection. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we need to look at that, and if if we got it on the books that it's got to be that way, we either need to enforce it or get it off the books. Yeah, and I'm not saying that it, if it's I mean, on the books that it's not That is one thing enforced. I'm tired of, all these regulations that we got down on the books but nobody's enforcing it. Well, well, let's just get them off the books and that way we ain't got so much crap to go over every time we go through them. And Troy, I'm not saying if it's on the books that it's not being enforced. Well, if we're losing water meters, it is. I don't, are we losing water meters? Uh, just just a, what we're used for example, <clears throat> for example, Chad Fisher, mm -hmm. he's got water service to his house, but he's got his own well, he's drinking out of it, so we're not charging him for water minimum charge because he's got his own well. And there's there's still a meter hooked up? So Yeah, there's still a, 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 a center there. He's got availability to water. He could turn in Monday and says, I want to go back on city water. We have to keep everything up ready for him to have that. So, yeah, there's maintenance costs and everything. Just because he doesn't use it doesn't mean it's not. That's right. Yeah, so, that's that's there, and I I was just thinking, and for, or, uh, Kevin, you thought maybe three or four other people in town may, or if maybe yeah. three, two. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I agree with that. I'd agree with that if we can pull the meter. Well, we can pull the meter. Well, that's what uh, I'm saying. Pull the meter, so we have no expense in that deal. Right, but we do have expense. We still have to. If we get a if we get a leak on that line to that water service, oh, right. we're going to fix it. Right. Because tomorrow he could say, I want water. I pay well, for a tap, so well, we do have an experience. To me, then, if, if, if the city is able to provide you with water, you pay your seventeen forty-five. dollars That's exactly what and I if think that's the way in that ordinance, I believe. Yeah. We need to, well, that's what I thought, too, but you, we can put it on the agenda. I, I think we, we need to address address I just remember we discussed it at length, and maybe, maybe we're fuzzy on it, but I just remember at that time. That we yeah, I don't know. John, that, that needs to be on the agenda so. for the next week, please. Yes. Got it. Okay. Anything else with regards to rates? Oh, all right. Let's move on then to. Healthcare staff recruitment and retention. Um, healthcare. We know that insurance is costing the city a pretty penny for the employees. We want to keep our employees. It is definitely a benefit to pay a little bit more, but we're going to have to look at it long term. I don't think 
we continue to fund it at the level that we're funding it. Um, you know, I'm not looking to cripple our employees by any means of the imagination. So I'm not sure what the solution is at this point in time, but I think it's something that we need to be talking about. So with regards to other staffing things, um, I think I'm hearing from the council that one of the priorities is having someone who can operate the power plant. Is that the case? Yes. Anybody else? Got an opinion or a voice? I mean, we've, we've got a staff right now that basically me and, and Mark Tompkins are, are just covering it right now. If I, if I leave town right now, I have to get with Mark, whether I go to Walmart or whatever, I make sure he's available. So if we have an outage, we can start the power plant. Dustin, no fault of his, just from, from time restraints and stuff. Like uh, Nick, Nick, Nick had run it by himself, and that wasn't an issue. We lost Nick, so now we're back to getting people retrained and keeping people here long enough to, to be able to have the experience to do it. And, you know, you can, you can teach somebody to start to plan that. The, the problem is teaching them when things don't go exactly right or you have an issue. That's, that's where the biggest problem is, and there's so many variables that you can run into. So, and it's my intention of, and with our new hire and everything, to, to increase that so we can we can have us have better coverage as far as that goes. So, the, the biggest complaint I get when we lose the electricity is how long it takes to get that thing online. Okay. Well, is gonna, is gonna, that is that a issue with equipment? Is that an issue with help? It's an issue. Or what is the issue with that? Okay. Well, what are you comparing it to? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, just telling you what my phone calls are. I think, it, I think it takes too long for this power to come back on. What kind of a, a, a statement is that if they don't have anything to compare it to? Well, I don't know that. Well, okay. But I, I do know sometimes when electricity goes out, it comes on pretty quick, and the next time it may take 30 to 45 yeah, that's minutes. That's exactly can be the time of the year, and I've, I've told council this. Right, but I'm just asking why. Why is that? I mean, okay, I'll tell you what I've told you guys before. In the summertime. Right. And we have a lot of load. I mean, we got everything, you know, everybody's got their air conditioners on, it's hot and everything. Most we're generally, sure. we're going to run three units. It's much simpler, like if the power went off right down here, we go down and start one unit up, let it warm up a little bit, put it on the line, no big deal. When you have to start at three units and get them all synchronized together, the Cooper, we have to let it warm up 45 minutes to an hour before we can even put load on it or it'll kick out. So I'm saying it all depends on the time of year and how many units. If I just got one unit, the time between like in the spring or early fall between when the uh, air conditioning quits and before the furnaces, we can start to cat up and be online in a very short order. Yeah. Huh? Go ahead. Okay. So I'm saying that's a that's a simple in the spring, like I say, during that transition, one unit's fer, fer, fairly easy. When you're running more than one unit, you have to let them warm up, get them synchronized. If you don't go through that process, you overload something or something doesn't work out or you get rushed and one trips out while you're loading it up, it puts all the load on all the other ones and you trip every one of them out and you lost everything you're working for. So you have to take your time. So like I say, somebody coming up to you and saying, I think it takes too long. What are they comparing it to? Well, I have no idea. I'm just telling you why. Well, I'm just saying, don't listen to every, you know. Every well, I mean, every time the electricity goes out, I mean, our phones ring. So, I mean. I know, but I'm, I'm just saying, you need to just tell them we're going to get it on as soon as we can. Phone. I mean, I don't understand that. Okay, okay. well. I mean, is there something we, like your warm-up times? Do we have block heaters and all that? We do have all on the, the, the CAT and the, and the OP have block heaters. Now, one thing that will change, like during the summer, is that when we go on, my understanding is, and I need to say for, find out for sure, my understanding is we will have to probably run water and oil heater on the, uh, the Cooper, which we don't. It's, it's strictly a summertime deal, but first to meet this rice knee shaft thing, we may have to have, my understanding was we have to have these engines warm at all times. So, but if we know we're probably not going to use it, you know, during the winter just because of the load factor, it may, we may not have to, but traditionally we just, we don't heat it or anything, and then that's like I say, it takes a while. Like that one when we had the ice storm, you only run one unit, uh, or did you have to have all three of them run? Uh, which ice storm? 
the last big one we had. I, I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm just asking you, like right. during the winter, if we have to have. Right now, as cold as it is, probably we can just do it with the with the uh, the OP. It's probably you know, I don't know what they're. If this was an extremely cold day yesterday. You know, the the OP one engine would have, would have handled our load. So, but, but, saying, but hardly ever, or we'd never actually use all three units in the winter then, probably. Not in the winter time, right? But just in the summer, right? Okay. But once again, things happen. You you you, you can anything mechanical can happen. And, and there's there's so many steps you have to go through on, on these engines, and every one of them is different. If you make a misstep or something like that, it may shut down. You may have a relay trip right. out, or and then you got to start over. And sometimes, yeah, that's what that that's what takes a while. But the main thing I I try and do is I don't get in a big rush just because everybody's waiting for electricity to come back on. I want to go through and make sure it works so we don't have to start over or don't burn something up or cause an issue that for us that we can't recover from. And can yeah, I just say that when the electricity goes out, our phones ring too. Like, right. I mean, I everybody, mean, everybody, everybody you just expects. Explain, well, I'm yes. just saying they, that's they my call, biggest complaint. They call and say, well, I'm just calling. My electricity is out. Yes, we know they're working on it. You know, it's going to take right. a little while. We can't tell you exactly when it's going to be on, but we do know that they're working on it. And it's not going to do us any good to call him up and say. Well, I don't call him up either. Yeah. I mean, I have I have to let him know that people are saying it's out or whatever, but that's the only right. reason I've ever done it. Yeah, yeah. it's just going to take time. I understand, I understand from you guys' point of view. Yeah, you, you have yeah I was just asking why. Uh, I mean, if there, what my whole point was is there's something equipment-wise or whatever that we can do to speed that process up. Probably not. You know, okay. I spend about $40 million there is putting in loaders on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if there, if there are 19... 42, 44? Well, the, these were overhauled in 80, 82 and 68. I don't know the right. original. What, what year motors are they? I'm not sure how, what they They're early 40s, late 40s, 50s motors. You don't start them, just go out and start them. Well, I understand that. I mean, it's going to take well, all, all, You know what? All Troy, Troy was trying to get at was... Is there anything we can do to speed that process or up? Or can we better educate our public as to what's involved with bringing the power plant online? And I think if we chose to go that route, and the community understood that in the winter time, because of the size of the community, we only have to fire one engine, and it doesn't take as long to bring everything online. But in the summer, when you're <coughs> in air conditioners and you've got the load, and I think everybody understands that concept, mm -hmm. that we have to bring all three engines online, and it has to be done carefully, or we're going to be out for six hours. Yeah, I mean, the, the summertime is the biggest thing. You know, right. so to me, and what also, and unless you guys want to spend... Uh, you know, money to do this. The biggest problem too is that we have to our circuits in the summertime when we bring one on, they are so loaded up. I mean, they hammer them engines like crazy to bring that all on at, at one time. We got some circuits, you know, the load on them is so much, it's just unlike in the, in the spring or, the, or right now, you know, it's just you bring them on and, and the engine just mm -hmm. In the summertime, you put on a circuit that is fully loaded. Everybody's waiting for that power to come back on, and you're hitting that thing, you know, with a, such a big load. It right. pulls it so far down. I talked to the city of Ellenwood. They've gone through the, what they do is they split their circuits up through switching. And, you know, they can, if they have a, a, a kind of summertime, they have an outage or something like that, they'll go out and break their circuits up. In other words, instead of just the west side one coming on all at one time, They'll go out and they've got switches where they can split that up. They'll bring the west side on, then they'll go out there and, and do the you know put the rest of it on so it doesn't hit it because you can you can knock an engine offline if you hit it too hard. So and then you got the cascade effect that just loads everything and trip everything out. So, right. But they're oh I don't know I think they're three or four thousand dollars a whack. So I'm saying if you're that would help us a lot during the summer. Not going to keep us from doing what we're doing, but it, it's a lot easier on your, your engines and stuff. Okay. So Basically, you just need to tell people they're calling you. Electricity is only a convenience. I just, you know, okay. I would just, you know, when people call you... give them your number. How about that? You know, when people call, yeah. if, if, if you can just, you know, and I, uh, people that live here the longest, they know it's going to come on eventually unless we have a catastrophic failure. Right. They just need to be patient and say it'll be on, they're working on it, you know, that's what the officers are, they, they're aware of it, they're working on it. And we also tell them, if you don't have it in an hour, 
give us a call back and we'll let you know if you should have it or not or if there's been another problem. And, and we have a few folks that are either on oxygen or something. While we're not responsible for them to have a battery backup and we're not responsible to bring them on, we're still concerned about them. So we make phone calls back to make sure they're doing okay or if we need to try to help them make other arrangements if we're not going to be back on soon. So, you know, we try. Bro. It's not unrealistic to think in the summertime <clears throat> under a really heavy load that it could be over an hour. And I know sometimes we've had times where it's been that, but there's a reason for it. It's not, you know. Just well, like I said, my whole point was just find out whether it's. I just tell them if there's something them. we can do that that either speeds that up or what what it is. So I that's all. It's, that's it's right now. I wasn't, been wasn't downgrading you for. No, I understand doing, that. But but, but I'm, you know I I know the reasons and, I'm, and I and I I get too carried away on. But I, just, you know, there's a reason for that, and it, it's we're doing the best we can, and I hope to to get these other guys trained so that we can we can it'll it'll help me out in my personal life if I can you know not bother Mark Tompkins every time I want to leave right. town right now. So, and we need the flexibility. I could be sick. Mark could be sick. So we need we need the depth. So that's what we're going to work on. But it's going to take a. a Quite a while. I mean, we can go down and start in. Are we talking two years? Are we talking five years? Are we talking ten years? Oh no! I mean, it. You know, six months to a year. If you really, really concentrate working with someone, and then, then like I say, you can train everybody to, to operate something when everything works right. But the, the problem is, and you can go through scenarios. But there's a lot of pressure when when, when something doesn't go oh. right. You know, everybody, why put the power ring on? You know, the phone rings right. again, you know. Right. My neighbor's got it and I don't. Well, when we tried to put your circuit on, something went wrong. So, you know, it's just right. one of those things. It's it just, it, uh, that's that's what takes a long time. And you could be years before you could be comfortable, you know. Let's take a five minute break. Sorry. I probably didn't give them out like I should have. Count them out. You get three reds and four blues. Preferably. You know, even I'll pick them up when you're done. There's plenty to go around. Here, what do you need? You need red ones? She's the one acting like a two-year-old over here. 
Two arms over here. You get all the watermelon. You don't even make it sweeten up a little bit. You have to trade with your neighbor oh, if you don't got the color enough. you want. Yeah. Watermelon. That's what Andy said too. I know. Good fact. I have to take my damn can. <laughs> Sherry, did you help you hear me hollering for Bruce this morning? No, why? <laughs> we had a bat in the house. Again? This a morning. What? Yeah. What? And a bat? <laughs> I had it cornered. I I saw it, so I shut off the whole house except for the living room that it was in and opened the front door hoping he, mm -hmm. that if I could get him moving, he'd go out. He, she, whatever it is. Um but Bruce had already got the um, racquetball racket and the tennis rackets out so we could bat it down if we needed to. I thought about calling Charlie, but um, I, so I went over and he must have been sleeping because I trapped him on the wall, right? So I have him with, I'm, and it's up here, and so I'm stretched up here and I'm going, okay, now what am I going to do? And so I started yelling for Bruce who was up in bed, but it was through three doors and the ceiling, but the front door was open, so I'm sure everybody in the neighborhood could hear me. <laughs> How come you got bats in your house? Well, we have that attic fan up in the attic, and I think when it gets cold, they come through those louvers. Oh, yeah. And they do, because well, we've had one in our house, too. This is not the first time. One time, it was in our bedroom at night. We woke up, and it was yeah. hitting our bed, you know, <laughs> and Bruce was like, Oh, there's a bat, you know, and there's nothing, I mean, I've gotten up with sick kids and <laughs> roof falling in on us and all that kind of stuff, but to get up to take care of a bat, that's just not fun. <laughs> well, just a suggestion. Plastic storage totes work really well for the kind with the lid. You stick the tote on the wall, slide it to the edge to where you can get uh. the lid up on it, and take it outside and dump it. Of course, we traumatized Jessica because we made her look at it before we took it outside. Mm. <laughs> she was about I think five I, or six I, at the time. I killed this one. I didn't want to, but I didn't. I was trying to get it the other racket underneath it. When it yeah. Yeah. But I don't know why they won't just go out the door, you know. <laughs> it's wide open. Like a fly. They can find their way in, but they can't find their way back Yeah. Out. And then we thought, well, we'll, we'll no. get it upstairs, but I pulled all the doors shut in the bedrooms. <laughs> We're lucky because we have those pocket doors we can pull out. That room I could just get totally isolated, but... Mm -hmm. I grew up with a swimming pool in our backyard. Right. Police get dive bombed at dusk. Oh, yeah. What? I remember a couple of times girls getting yeah, caught in right. their hair. Oh, yeah. Mom always, because we had them in our house at yeah, Mom's, because we had the same thing. We had the exhaust fan. That's really so I remember everybody walking around the house with pillows on their head. So I think that would be kind of a freak out moment. <laughs> I can't believe the word she ever said. else that we want to talk about with regards to recruitment, retention, um, personnel related expenses? How many positions are we short right now? Well, I'm still short one in electrical and one in water. 
and what, one app? Well, no, I've got uh, several apps as far as on the, don't have any for uh, Nick's position as supervisor in electric. Really have I had, just did months and months ago, I had one call on it, you know, send an application, never got back with us, but uh, I've got you know, three or four or so, maybe more on the, for the water sewer. But, uh, so, when was the last time we advertised for the electrical supervisor? Well, we've got it on the Kansas Works. Okay. So it's, it's out there. Has it been updated recently? Well, it actually lapsed. It was off, uh, you know, as far as, you know, they only went for so long mm -hmm. you call them back. So it is off. I need to, I called them the other day because I heard it was off. So uh, as far as any update, we just, you know, it's the same thing as we've had before. So. Okay. And are both of those positions out on the website, John? I believe so. I'll okay. double check, but I haven't. I don't think I've taken them off. So. Is the starting wage on there? No, yeah. because it's always been by qualification. Is okay. there Maybe a, that was hurting us. Is there a? It won't be less than. No, because we've never. It's always been you know, kind of the councils you know depends on how much you know taking someone off the street or we we don't have a quote minimum that I've ever been told on okay. anything so. Anything else with regards to is there anything <coughs> you would like to discuss with, with in regards to long term financial planning? Is there things that any of you see as an upcoming issue as far as something we may need to be spending big money on, things that we need to be planning for? Well, so we covered that for sure. <coughs> on some of our uh, bonds and stuff, do on we what? have on some of our uh, the bonds that we mm -hmm. have, are and also uh, our investments? Do we have options to do other things with that, as far as invest it? The investments were in, held. In this, I mean, I know we can't go out and. Put it in the stock market or something yeah. like that where it can be lost but is there any other options that we can do as far as i know the only other option um, that takes it out of a local bank is i've heard of something with the state but the way the state has handled their investments i'm not so sure we really want to put it in the state's hands i mean that was definitely you guys' decision i'll i can look into that a little bit more They've always wanted to keep it local. Well, I don't think anywhere you're going to make much on your investments. Our bonds. That's why I didn't know if there was any other options that we had to maybe up or return. Whether we they've had the same discussions, you know, when the crooks get together and you know we're all shaking our head at what it can be going on, but that we're held by law. Because it's, we can't make it un, unsecure, you know. Right, right. So, I understand that. <clears throat> I can check um, on the one state thing and see if that still exists. As far as the bonds, we're pretty well set. Okay. When do our bonds expire, or when are they paid off? Well, on? one bond is, of course, the Centennial Court. And basically, that's just a pass-through. They tax, you know, they have special property taxes. The, the county collects it, they give it to us, and we pay them on for it. The property owners are the ones that pay that. Um, the fire truck, sorry. See our last payment on that one is in 2018. It's ten thousand dollars a year on the principal, and then we pay interest twice a year. What's it set up?
Um, they vary depending on the bond, but anywhere from 4.7, there's a 3. three. How much is the interest payment on the fire truck twice a year? Pardon me? How much is the interest payment on the fire truck twice a year? Well, it changes as it goes down, as the principal goes down. Okay. How much are we paid? How much did we pay this year? In 2013, we paid a total of 1370 Okay. Is that what you were after, Troy? Mm -hmm. Next year, we'll pay 940 Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, wait a minute. We paid that twice, 1370 So we still owe roughly, what, 40 grand for the truck, then? basically, is what you're saying? We spent 50. 50. <laughs> we owe around 5000 for the dump truck and then the nitrate removal plant and the Centennial Court bond. When will the nitrate removal plant be paid off? Well, it's set up for 20 years, but... You know, as soon as we find out how the other payment, the $750,000 payment affects things, <clears throat> that should cut off quite a few. Plus, you know, if we have extra money, we can budget to do it. We can pay it off early. You know, we've gathered this money along the way because we increased our rates before we were having right. to make the payments. So we can make this big payment. If our rates continue to be the same and our expenses continue to be the same, then we may gather an extra $10,000 a year or something that we could go ahead and put on now. We'll have to see how it all... Okay, the $5,000 one you said? It's $4,753.69 and it's the dump truck. Is that going to be paid off this next year? In 2014. Okay. And that's a lease. Now we are looking at the um, emissions down at the power plant that we have part of the money encumbered for, but we'll have to pay out. And we've talked about uh, doing a lease on that. What was that bill going to be? It's been it like the bid was like 220 or something like that, and we've got a hundred and what ten thousand. It's like two twenty-five total, is what it was. Somewhere right around there. And I think we've got a hundred and ten. So. Have we ever, did we ever go, I know we talked about it before, but as far as like each department had doing a strategic plan, I know we talked about that before. Have we ever, because if you really, if you really look at the, the benefits of whether it's a three, five, ten year plan, whatever it is, anything you have that has a shelf life, whether it be a computer, a vehicle, or anything like that for budgeting purposes, if you know that the realities of keeping a, for instance, a computer operational for 10 years, where it's going to end up costing you more money to, to keep that in repair versus replacing that every three to five years. I mean, I, I think that would be a benefit for each department to, have to do some kind of a plan to say that, you know, for, for us, like our handheld radios, I mean, if they get wet as much as we use them, I mean, really five to seven years is about their shelf life. And if you can, if you know that, if I know within three years, I'm going to need to budget for that. I can put that in there with, instead of maybe a year or two before that, going ahead and adding that in just in case the fact that it might break down because it's old. And then you end up turning back in money. That I think, you know, what we do with the, the police car right now is we put um, $5,000 a year from general fund into capital improvements specific to the police car. Um, Mel budgeted to do a transfer of 5000 for the swimming pool for the repairs that, and he can explain that, but it's going to take several years to build it up to be able to do that. Um, is that something that we have to, to agree to let the department heads do? Or is that something you and the department heads figure out? Well, when we did budget, money? when we did budget, we talked about that. 
Right. But he can't actually, and then we'll do the transfers, which you guys get to approve. Right. And then before it can actually be spent, it has to be approved. Well, yeah, I understand that. But what I'm saying is, I mean, from my standpoint, the department heads ought to be already looking at that mm -hmm. and going, yeah, I'm going to need new radios or whatever. And that'd be between you guys working it out. And then the budget time, then, then the money's transferred. But, I mean, and then when it's time for it to be replaced, then you bring it up to council as you would normally. Well, I mean, it, it wouldn't be something that we do. <clears throat> you're right, every five years, go ahead and budget it because every five years we're going to replace your radios. Well, what I'm talking about is, is the strategic plan is something that you set aside and you basically bring to you guys and just say, hey, you know, the shelf life on our tasers is five years. So I want you to know now, in three years, I'm going to be coming to you at, probably asking for this money. And then that just gives everybody kind of a heads up of what's going on instead of having like what we've had in the past to where, holy crap, all of a sudden you're wanting to get tasers, you want to get this and you want to get this, and, and you guys didn't know about it and you've got a truck breaking down and this and this. Right. If you know a couple of years ahead of time that, that this is going to be coming, it just kind of softens the blow of, and not making it look like you got a department head that's just coming to you just wanting to spend money because it's their right. husband. That's where I just thought it would be beneficial mm -hmm. for you guys. Not necessarily to set money aside. That would come out of that year's budget. Exactly. Okay. But just to know ahead of time of, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in that way it can kind of help. You might be able to help, help offset some things in the way that you purchase them so that you don't have a computer and a body armor and all this kind of stuff that's going to come up in the same year all need to be replaced. And then you're wondering why your proposed budget for this year was 50000 more than it was last year. You could even take it a step further. Um, granted, we're talking a way bigger municipality, but we had an actual designated equipment replacement fund. And anytime we bought equipment, um, and I mean, we we ran a full trash service. We had a water sewer department. We had a city lab. We had a wastewater treatment facility, um, police department, fire departments. So every piece of vehicle was set up for a designated life. Police cars rolled on like five years or seven years. I don't remember now, it's been too long. But, and we would set aside X amount of money a year and put and designate it to that vehicle specifically so that when the time came to replace it, the money was sitting there ready to go and it had been collected over that seven year period so that it could be budgeted way more effectively. Mm -hmm. And you don't have the the lease. You're right. not paying any interest. You're you've you've right. planned ahead. Right. And yeah, you have to go ahead and, and charge the taxpayers for the money you're holding aside so that it's ready, but it saves them money in that they don't have to pay interest. So I mean that's something that we could look at doing in the future. If that's something the council has interest in, I think it would be beneficial. Even if even if it was less complicated and just simple enough to say, okay, the police department has three vehicles, three tasers, four tasers, body armor, whatever. It equates to this amount of money, and we know in this next time period we're going to have to replace it all. So we need to be withholding it or setting aside this much every year so that if something comes up beforehand, you can actually tap into that money as opposed to having to take it out of budget and then just continue to, you know, rebuild. So it would be a capital projects fund specific to each department. Right. right. But if you set that up and it's not used or whatever, we'd still have the ability to transfer that somewhere else, though, correct? I, I believe that the capital projects fund is not a budgeted fund, right? I think you're right. So we budget to make the transfer and then it gets to sit in there for however long until we need to use it. Okay, but if we didn't use it and we needed the following year we knew we were going to have to budget some, for some other deal. I think if Can you we pull it out of that to go to another? If you make it specific to a department, which I would recommend, then it would have to be used for that department. So to you be able to make take, it where we could use it for any department, it just have to be a 
you could set up a gigantic just, uh, equipment. Yeah, just a general replacement equipment well, we replacement have fund. The equipment reserve fund, and we have the water and light surplus already. Okay. But when you're talking about what he's talking about, it would be to to make it specific for those items. You know, even if it was, you know, you make your list and you come up with a total number, right. but. You are, your intention is to be able to spend it on that. And that's why right. you would budget from there. I, I was just wondering. Yeah. I, I mean, understand I know, what you're, I know where you're going with that, but. But my nice answer to, to that, to I believe, is no. As an emergency, say, if we have this general equipment fund for replacement. And I mean, granted, yeah, we got it scheduled to replace a cop car in two years and a road grader in five or whatever. But you have an emergency with the loader or something to where you could still use pull if you have to pull from whatever his fund was or whatever so you could still do that I would under say, an emergency situation too i would where say then you, you want you would be more likely to move that money into the equipment reserve rather than right. into capital projects but i think you could do both okay you set aside for the emergency, but you also set aside for the planned. Okay. Anyway, it's just a way to manage money and... And you use the budget that you have that year for another time that, you know, you wouldn't have that all. Is there, is there any type of like <coughs> an account that you can set up <coughs> Exactly what Troy said. That covers everything pertaining to the city. We already have them. What's that? The equipment reserve. Equipment reserve. Mm -hmm. We have seventy-two thousand. We can spend 000. that on anything, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. then we have seventy. Why aren't we transferring all that money that's left over somewhere besides the equipment fund? <clears throat> that way, you can get it out of the equipment fund and go to where, whatever department you need to go to, instead of what we run into. With the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, oh, we you can't use this, you can't use this, you can't use that. Well, if Why you, isn't that money going into that fund? I, I'm I'm not sure I understand your question. Basically, what he's asking is, <clears throat> why aren't we putting everything that we have left over every year into a fund that is accessible for anything? And I don't know that we can do that. I think so. there are certain that rules that are not like you can't take in the general fund which is a totally tax-based fund, you can't take that and use any of that money to pay for the water and light equipment or something. That's not what I asked. What I said is, is there any kind of a fund that is available that we can transfer money into that can come back out of there and go to any place that has to do with the city of St. John? But what she's saying is the money that goes into that fund mm -hmm. can only come from certain areas. She's saying you can't take it from this area and shove it over to this area, and that's what I was getting at with my deal, too. Yeah, I, but if, I always if, get if, screwed it, up if it goes out of them out. areas into one certain fund, and you can go out of that fund into any fund or anywhere you need to go, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't understand. It's, it's got to do with where the money originates from. If, okay, it's, if it's a mill levy, there are certain things you can do with it. If it's a fee for services, there are certain things that you can do with it. Is it not all city of St. John money? It is, but it can't be mixed that way. You you have the tax funds and you have the revenue funds or the proprietary funds. And those okay, really can't make mix. Two funds. One for the tax money and one for the other money that you can go anywhere with. Make it feel a lot simpler. Do we have something to that effect right now? Well, I mean you're talking about budget and you're talking about cash too. So we could throw all the budget we have. We could show that we use it all okay. somehow. Well, we're, okay, we're talking about the end of the year. So mm -hmm. don't we do that anyway? We, we look, we schedule, when we do the budget, we schedule for certain transfers. Right. And you all agree with those transfers. And then at the end of the year, we check and make sure that we still have budget authority to do that and cash to do that in those funds. 
and then we bring that to you at the end of the year and you approve it and we transfer. I, um, we were working on that prior yesterday a little bit and we just couldn't get, um, we're not close enough to the end of the year to be sure on a lot of our encumbrances and stuff. So it'll come later. We try to use, if, if there's something we know is going to happen, we try to encumber that money, which actually puts it like in accounts payable, so to speak, so that we can use this year's budget and then pay for it next year. So it doesn't come out of next year's budget. And I know I don't really feel like I'm answering your question, but we take an awful lot of what we already have. If we have something left, we have already scheduled to transfer that money. We transfer 182000 from the Water and Light Fund and 20000 from the Sewer Fund into General Fund so we can keep our mail down. Okay? Them, them are the only two that we can actually... We can transfer into the general fund from the revenue fund. We cannot transfer from the general, general fund. General back to... That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Them are actually the only two departments. The water and light and the sewer are the, actually would be the only two that we could pull money out of to, to go to an, into a fund like he's talking about. Yes. But we do. We do take that five thousand. We take that five thousand from general fund to capital projects specific to the police car, which that's why you can't use that for anything else. It came out of the general fund. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The only thing we can basically do anything with at any point is is our yeah. and the only revenue ones we have based is the water and light and the sewer. Mm -hmm. I mean, solid waste is considered a revenue, but it, there's no revenue made, <laughs> you know, it's... Wow. So, yeah, those, those two, it, and that's where we transfer to our equipment reserve, and that's where we transfer to our uh, water and light surplus. And you don't have as many rules on the equipment reserve and the water and light surplus then because it's not budgeted. We don't have to worry about, if we have cash, we can spend it in that exactly. fund. But when we have, like, say for the car deal for the, the police department, and he wants, say, his computer, we want to replace two computers, can we pull out of that car fund to pay for them, or do you have to specifically... I would have to can, ask can, that Do you question. have to rename that fund just a general equipment for the police department? Right now, it is capital project, and there's a line item police department. You know, but you're supposed to know what that's set aside for, right? So I would have to ask the auditors, you know, I can just give Vicki a call and ask her if he needed computers instead of a car, right. could we do that? And right. I think but, the answer and that, that was my, yes. that was my I, I deal about... I think so about, too, but I don't my, want to say uh, that. If, that was my actual, what I was trying to get to when we mm -hmm. were saying, you know, he's, he's saying to have a plan. Yeah, I'd say within I agree with the that, department. But what I was wanting to do was to be able to put that Instead of having a plan for, we're going to, have to replace the computer in two years. We're going to, have to replace the car, and we have to set up each fund for each one of them. No, if I, you could just have a general deal to where, in each department, to where you could spend, he could spend that money uh -huh. on any piece of equipment. That just he like Julianne to. said, if he took and and he knew what all his stuff was, and then at the end of the, you could add up what that you need to set aside each year, and you could make one entry to put that in each year and, and then, then it would be available it okay. but it would have to be for his department his right. his but it doesn't have to be for a specific specific item. yes item. that's what i that's what i think okay so this line item would that you're talking about would encompass almost everything to your knowledge right now in his department in his department correct yeah. okay it would not be available to By a local mike right Right. You know, for the fire department right. or Mel for something else. Right. right. Did that answer your question, Mom? No. Okay. That's all right. No, it's not all right. You I'm got a question. I'm thinking outside of the box. No, so you're not thinking outside of the box. Yeah, I am. Yeah, it's fine. Go ahead. But but what what we have is the equipment reserve from the proprietary funds. Mm -hmm. Is that where that money comes from? Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically the equipment reserve can be used anywhere in the city. If we have a catastrophic sewer failure, if we have, if, if the water tower gets knocked over, if 
even if, let's say, all three of the police vehicles were destroyed at one point in time, we would be able to pull that money out of there and use it for that purpose, mm -hmm. which is basically what you're getting at, right? But, but what I was doing was trying to build a fund that works nothing, is not good for anything except replacing equipment. Okay, I see what you're saying. I got it. Not, not, not an emergency. It's, it's, it's an amount of money that's set forth over a period of years that is used to buy a loader or to buy a cop car or to buy a digger truck or to buy the girls in the office a runaround car to meetings or whatever. Yeah. But that amount of money in that fund can be used for any of that equipment. And I believe our capital projects fund could be used just like that. Well, I question that, John, because the capital fund, the money that was in the bank when the nitrate plant started, we started out that all we could use out of that $3.6 million or whatever it is was $400,000. That money's accumulated over the years, laying in the bank, but we couldn't use it. Well, but we haven't put it into that capital project fund. That's what I'm saying. But why would you want to have it there if all of a sudden you have a problem with a nitrate plant, you can't get it out of there and put it on a nitrate plant immediately? See what I'm saying? I think but can. we could if it was in it. You have to petition for it. Yeah, but what I'm trying to do, Kevin, is get a fund that's out there that Mal comes in and he says he needs a loader now. Well, we do have that fund. We just don't have it built up very big. Okay, and so seriously. what he's trying, no, seriously, what he's trying to get at is we need to look at moving our money differently so that we can build that fund. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? I, mean, I think we have funds in place. We just need to move the money there. Right. That, that's what I think we need to be doing. We're transferring 182000 from water and lights to general fund every year. Mm -hmm. Is that amount absolutely necessary? Well, well that's, I mean, how much how much revenue do we generate from a mill in the city? You know, that varies, of course, on valuation. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Okay. But um, I mean, and those are the things that we need to discuss at budget time and have ready at budget time, because um, if we're not going to you know, that's going to affect the taxpayers quite a bit. But it all affects the taxpayers. <clears throat> I mean, the bottom line is, is no matter what we're doing as a city, it affects the taxpayers and the community. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're either paying for services or you're paying property taxes, but you're still paying. Um, and I don't know that we need to wait until budget time to have some of those discussions. I think we Well, we can have the discussion. We can't... We can't actually do those transfers if they're not budgeted. Though. I understand that. Okay. <clears throat> um, but those are some of the things that we as council need to start maybe taking a little more time with and paying more attention to and asking the kind of questions that you've been asking today as we go through that process so that we can make sure that we're where we want to be, where we feel like we need to be to protect the community. Okay, if that's what if that's what it takes to do, when it comes time that these CDs renew, they need to be restructured and put in a different different category, so you can get a hold of them. Because if Mel needed a hundred thousand dollars right now, there's no way we could give it to the bank and get one of them CDs, cash it in, and take care of the problem. Even our though the money's been collected from the city for years. We have our CDs set up very close together within 30 days, which would be what he'd have to have, it, I'm pretty sure we could get that money. Yeah, but his point is is that we don't have the ability to go after something that isn't necessarily designated. Right. Is, is that, you know, the money is designated for this and for this and for this, and we can't spend it for that purpose. You mean because of the funds? Because of the fund, right. Okay. I mean, the only way to make our cash more liquid is to put it in the bank account that makes very little interest, you know, when you're talking about the CDs. I don't, it's, it's not a liquidity issue. It's an issue of 
where the money is sitting as far as the availability to do a budget adjustment or whatever needs to be done to be able to spend that money in that 30-day time period. Okay. I mean, right? I think that's... That's, yeah. Good. Not that I'm going to spend any of the money. That's not it at all. No, I am But if, if, like his cop car or Mel's loader, you know, we could sit here and say, well, we've got a we got $100,000 dedicated to equipment. Right. And we decide to buy that cop car, or we decide to buy that loader. We don't have to go through any hoops. It's there. It's already there. Right, right now, Bob, in equipment reserve, we have $72,500. In our water and light surplus, we have two hundred and forty-four thousand dollars. Right. And so we've been building those. You guys have been making good decisions to to build those. Exactly. I'm aware of that, Jonah. But the fact of the matter is, how many hundred thousand dollar CDs is in the bank? But two million. But that two, two million. That seed, the, yeah, that actually makes up what we're banking on. I realize that, Troy. Above and beyond your budget is a certain amount of free money. Clear money. I use the term free. It's not free. It's clear money. And if it's not, then we better do find out how come it ain't. What you're saying is not budgeted for anything. anything. It's not budgeted for anything. Yeah. I think if the water tower fell over right now, we just have to go to have a special meeting, a petition. We need this much money out of this account to go over there. That's what that money's there for. Mm -hmm. We couldn't do that when we built a nitrate plant. We started out, Kevin, yeah. they were going to allow us $400,000 to go to the nitrate plant. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden it jumped to six, and then it was three quarters of a million. But the nitrate plant wasn't an emergency. I mean, that's, we have that money for emergency. We have time. That's what they said it was over at the bank, meeting at the bank. You're going to go to jail if you don't do this. Is that not an emergency? Yeah, that's what they said. But we have time to plan and finance it through the state. Uh, whatever, move on. I mean, we could, if you want to pay it off, bring it to a vote, we'll get the money out of there and we'll what? pay it off. That wasn't what I was saying okay. at all. I was using that for a but that money's there. I think you can use it. Well, I don't think you can. You can talk to somebody that can petition for it. We, can, we can't use what's set aside for the general fund to operate on. We can only use what's set aside for the water and light fund and the equipment reserve and the, the water and light surplus. So if you want to offset never having that situation again, we just build the equipment reserve and the water and light surplus and still leave enough for operation in the water and light fund. I think it'd be good, you know, on that equipment reserve. It doesn't matter. We know we're going to have a need at some point. <coughs> Just say we're going to add $20,000, $10,000 every year to it so that at some point or another you know you're going to buy a piece of equipment. And we don't get what you're talking about, Bob. I mean, That's what I was trying to do. But I was trying to bring out one of them CDs and get it set into that, that fund, but I can't get that through anybody. So basically what you're wanting... But I don't want to set it up just for your equipment. I want to set it up for any piece of equipment in the city of St. John. Okay, so you want to take one of the $100,000 CDs that's sitting in the bank and move it to equipment reserve. Exactly. So that, that, that money, it's still growing interest. Leave it as a CD. Okay. So it's still wrong. So you want to but specify the it, CD? I don't know. What he wants to do is put $100,000 into the equipment reserve. Okay. For whatever we need it for. For whatever we need Whatever it. comes up. So when we get ready to do our transfers, if, I mean, there's already one budgeted for that, and I don't have it here to tell you exactly how much. Well, maybe I do. You can keep discussion, and I will look for that. But, um we can transfer up to to make that a hundred thousand dollars in in our next transfers okay what, what we need to do is when you get all those transfers ready you need to bring you, you bring them to council anyway right for approval so i actually i'm going to try to have them in your packet so that if everything looks good to you you can go ahead and vote on it at the next meeting 
Now, I won't be there, so if there's any questions about it, we can have a special meeting for the end of the year. You know, we've done that before, but if we can do it in the regular meeting, then great. Okay. So, so if you could, when you're scheduling those transfers, if you could bump that amount that okay. goes up into the equipment reserve, not up to, if there's money, if you can add $100,000 to it. I'll have to see, because that's a budgeted yeah. transfer, what we would have to do. It's a budgeted transfer. We, but we, we can do a budget amendment, correct? Mm -hmm. If we have time sheet? to. you got a current balance sheet. I have, yeah. And that's what I was going to look. It may be bumping it up with that. Anyway, this is, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but I think I can throw it in there. What he's saying is he wants to take our balance that's in the bank and all our investments, mm -hmm. and he's just wanting to pull one of these out of there. That's what you want to see. Right here, investments. Two point zero three one. Right. But there was the CDs just laying in the St. John National Bank. But that also is what makes up this whole thing, right. Bob. Right, I'm aware of that. But these CDs in that bank is not got the budgeted money in it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it has to. That's what makes the whole budget. Then how can you keep maintaining and having the 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 CDs growing because every year? They're gaining interest. I'll, I'll bring you a deal. There is, I know there's 15 or 18 CDs on a sheet over there. Mm -hmm. We does it every month. We tie out our investments in our bank every month to our, our funds. And we're scheduled for this year to transfer to equipment reserve $48,000. So that'll put us over 100000 in equipment reserve. We're for our water and light surplus, we're scheduled to uh, transfer 60000 So we're putting over 108000 in from this year's budget into those two accounts that will be available for you. Like but, you can move on. but you can't pull, Bob, you can't pull money, just automatically pull money out of that to put it somewhere else without drastically changing this whole deal. Because that makes this whole thing. Okay. Right. You have your whole thing set up. You have all your money and your assets. And then each year, and as you go through business, you delegate in budget form, put things in certain places where you know you're going to need them. <coughs> so you don't have to just. I think what Bob's saying is don't we have any money that's not budgeted for anything? Yeah. yeah. The equipment reserve and water and light surplus and water and water life, yeah. It's not budgeted for anything. There are certain funds that are not budgeted funds. But we have to budget to get it there. So when I and and but we're we've got good amounts for our transfers to keep increasing that. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. And and I mean that's the best way to explain it. It's a numbers game. The yeah. city has two point however many million dollars in investments. You but that money, that. a good chunk of it, is earmarked to make payments and do what needs to be done. And, and this is the printout that you're talking about. That was growing because we had money coming in for the the nitrate removal plant to be able to spend on it. We cashed out a couple of those to be ready to make that big lump sum payment. So our right now our bank account, our checking account is at eight hundred thousand, which is crazy and never would be, except that we're anticipating making the seven hundred and fifty. So when those came due, we went ahead and put them into our um, checking account so that we wouldn't have to take a loss when something came up. Okay, I think we've exhausted that one. Is there anything else anybody would like to discuss? Um, yeah, I'd like to, um, John, I'd like to find out the, um, the police department budget, specifically personnel. Um, for this year? Uh, yes.
You want a total for all the... Um, Overtime and everything? Yes, please. Okay. Uh -uh. Thought I had a panic attack. For full time overtime and standby, our budget is $167,305. And how much have we spent today? One hundred thousand six seventy six eighty nine. Leaves a budget balance of sixty six thousand six hundred twenty eight eleven. What was that again? Sixty-six thousand six hundred twenty-eight eleven. Now this is at the end of November, mm -hmm. so we still have three payrolls left to put on that because we do three in <coughs> excuse me December, so we get all of everything in. We just do one in January and three in December. No, this is just factoring in what um, what personnel we have on the police right now. Mm -hmm. The budget for a fourth or even a part-time officer, do we have the money? Do the, does the police have the money in the... I did budget for four. For four, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so it was brought up that we were spending far too much money in the city and that we cannot afford a fourth officer. So what's stopping us from getting a fourth officer if we have this money in there? Well, I think you might say we couldn't afford it. Everybody I spent too much money. Said that that we they don't think from, they needed it. Direct quote from Sherry. You can't afford it. You know, I've had that on tape. So you're saying the money left in there. Well, I'm saying is if we have the money in there to hire a fourth officer, even a part time, why aren't we doing it? Nobody's ever brought up part time for one. Yeah, we did. We gave him options to, to well, do that. Nothing's been done about it, though. But, if, but that ain't our problem. So, Troy and I have, you know, have talked about the part-time officers. Nobody's told him he couldn't have a part-time officer. We've also, we've encouraged that. The only thing that's keeping the only thing that's been voted down is hiring another full-time officer. Okay, well, we can't get a full part-time officer here, apparently. So it's keeping the part-time officers. I have two mm -hmm. that are willing to work. It's getting them here at work. Getting them here to work. The one I have, I have, uh, she has told me three different times she was going to get me her schedule so we could get together and I could plug her in where we would need her to work. And that hasn't happened. The other one, who previously worked for the city of Stafford, quit. Mm -hmm. They have since fired an employee. And I believe he is back working for them to fill in their spots. Okay. But it was the same situation. I got a hold of him working once and said, because he works, uh, he works at the salt plant in somewhere, I, I think in Lyon, somewhere in Rice County. Mm -hmm. Or he was working 12 hour shifts there, and I told him, I said, Well, I can't really expect to use you on the days you're working a 12 hour shift if you're going to work 12 hours there and come cover 8 to 12 for me. That's not smart. Okay. Um, and so he had never gotten back with me either to tell me when he could work so I could plug him in somewhere. So have I'm, we advertised for a part time officer? We have advertised twice in the past and never received an application. I'm not saying we couldn't advertise again. Does KTOA have any kind of newsletter or anything you could put out? Well, when, yeah, when we advertise for the part time, I advertised with local newspapers. I advertised on KPOA and, and through KECP. Um, our biggest problem here is not having the bigger departments close to draw from. You know, I mean, it's just, it's hard to get. So on your part-time officer that you've hired, can you, when you sit down and you're 
scheduling your three-man department over the year, can you plug her in to your schedule at all? No, because because she works full time for another department, her priorities oh, lie there, okay. and it's kind of hard to. But and it would be the same way if I had her scheduled to work for us, and her chief called and said, "Hey, we got somebody sick. I need you to work." You know. So really, I mean, it's other than on somewhat of a even a monthly basis would be stretched a little bit. It's more of it's more of on a kind of a case by case. You know, if I know this month I've got a guy on vacation for five days and I need somebody to cover one or two to alleviate some overtime, then that's kind of how we have to work it. But if the people that have told me they wanted to work in the end don't get with me to get those hours, then I'm kind of stuck. If we have the money for to hire a fourth officer, what's holding us up from doing that? It's been budgeted. <coughs> so why are we doing it? Why aren't we trying to give these officers some much needed rest? We're Do you really to want to without having to cover the expense of a full time officer? That's why council has authorized part time people. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody's fault that the chief hasn't been able to get somebody reliable to fill into that spot, but mm -hmm. council is trying to give them that relief. Well, on, I mean, in regards to a fourth full time. I guess my biggest question would be is, you know, there's there's three specific things as a council that you guys asked us to go through with the impression that if we fulfilled those three things that we would be hiring a fourth officer and that's never happened. So either there was a miscommunication and, and we took that wrong or if that's just something you decided not to do then that's fine. But I've never, I've never heard as far as like I said, I mean, we went through that whole year plus going through this stuff in our minds saying as, as soon as we get these things fulfilled, then we would be looking to hire a fourth, fourth officer. And that was another impression of mine as to why that fourth position was kept in the budget for when those things were completed, then the budgetary money would be there to, to fill that position. And that's the way I understood it myself, that if you followed everything that council had set aside for you to do, then we would look into hiring a fourth officer. Because there has, I mean, Kevin's, I mean, Sherry, Kevin have both made comments about they didn't think we could afford it. And if, I mean, if it is truly an issue of money, then the money that we spent on Joe Palacios and the gentleman to do our psychological testing was just thrown down the drain because it was all for naught. If, if the basis of doing that was for the purpose of Fulfilling requirements to hire a fourth officer. Yeah. We do studies all the time that we don't know anything with, so. Well, no, I understand that, but it's it, it, it's the communication that was I given that to us is, is where the question comes in. My biggest theory is that I've grown up here, and many others have, and the population goes this way, and the employment goes this way. less and less and less and we get more and more and more. I'm sure there's an answer for it, but I just don't agree to it. I just failed to see the logic behind not giving these officers the and looking out, looking out for their well-being. Stand firm by what I've said before. We are not being good employers by putting them through all of these hours that they're working. It's not just affecting them, it's affecting their families, it's affecting their personal lives. I know that if it was me, I wouldn't want to do that. I'm surprised that we haven't had anyone quit yet. How many, how many days did you tell me the other day, Adam, that, that you have, each officer has for leave out of the year? It was a total out of the year, was either 82 or 84. Do you get 82, 82 days a year off? No, no, that's combined. That's not each one of us. That's combined. 
I thought you said that was per officer. No, no, I said that's, that's why. I, that's no, why I told you that I need to become a police officer. <laughs> so the only thing you told me in that phone conversation is yeah. what you didn't know. I don't know shit about shit about the police department. That's what I told you. So I know about no. that too. Well, I just no. I told you we had eighty-two days a year combined. Is what I was saying. Combined. Okay. And, and then when you add our training time onto it, that comes out to almost four months a year. Um, and is that your sick time too? Is that you holiday? You can't take sick time. No, no, that is the eighty-two. The eighty. It's either eighty-two or eighty-four combined. It's holiday. It's holiday vacation. vacation. Okay. And it's the reason I say 82 or 84 is because some some years like this year they you give an extra holiday for right uh, Christmas Eve and that kind of thing. So no, we the only time in the past two years any of us have taken any sick leave is when the doctor has told us you can't work. I mean it's because you're either sticking somebody working their days off or you're sticking somebody working a 24 hour shift mm -hmm. to cover. So, Adam, if you all were able to, t if you scheduled everybody's holidays and vacation <clears throat> so that everybody could use everything up, how many hours what, would there not be coverage, I guess is how I would say it. If, I mean, you guys choose to only have three officers and yet they're due their, their leave, they should be able to use their leave, then the only way to do it is to not be covered at certain times, right? Well, we, Given those two, two facts. We can't not be covered, though. I can't have somebody called 911 on a domestic and my dispatcher says, I'm sorry, there's nobody on duty. Would we, the county have to pick it up at that point? No. The, because we have a police department, the county is not statutorily required to answer any calls within the city limits. They do not have to answer anything. And the other thing is, who tells you that? Who tells me that? Yeah. The state. The, the you, you can look it up. If we have if we have a city charter saying that we have and will maintain a police department, the county is not statutorily required to answer our calls. Well, uh, we don't have a statutory whatever a charter a charter. That yes, says, you do. Oh yeah. That says we have to. You have twenty four hour everything because we're not doing it. No, it doesn't say we okay. have to give we 24 hours. Right. The we charter ordinance that sets out up the, the streets 24 police hours a day. department. Somebody is on call and responsible for the, that time, 24 hours a day. Which means when I'm on call at whatever, 4 o'clock in the morning and I get a call for a domestic, I get dressed and I go take it. I mean, I don't think you want to, I sure as heck don't want to incur the liability and spend years in a civil case because I said, I'm sorry, I'm sleeping. I'm not going to come and answer your domestic violence call. And somebody gets killed. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if as, if as a city council, if you give me permission to not cover those hours, then you'll be named in a lawsuit too. That's just the way our world works today. You can't you can't leave your people without coverage. Is there any place else we can reach out to for part time coverage? The only thing I can think of is to try soliciting applications again. Okay. <clears throat> what about like retired officers? Is there a retired officers, state of Kansas retired officers league or something that? No. They usually stay members of KPOA. They become lifetime members, right? Well, no. You have to you have to satisfy specific requirements oh. to become a lifetime member, and that's that's a voting process. And there's only one officer a year that's voted into that. I so. see. Um, again, I mean, you're, you're not going to get a retired officer from Hutch or Wichita to come work 8 or 12 hours for Right, I understand that. I'm thinking hour. more along the lines of Prater right then. Well, again, I mean, it's, to my knowledge, there isn't any, like you said, organization, association where they congregate. So. But you haven't actually put out a a uh, ad or something for. Yeah, we've we've advertised twice in the yeah. past, and we've never gotten an ad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should put it out again. I don't. I mean, not, may not do any good, but I don't have a problem with that at all. How does Stafford cover theirs? 
Because they would be, they would have the well, same charter, right? For some reason, there is this weird misconception that Stafford has somebody on duty 24 hours a day or just doesn't take calls when they don't want to. That's not right. I mean, they, they do on call time just like we do. Now, they may not be out patrolling the street, but if they're at home and they get a call, they go take it. The, the only calls we have, we have ever not taken is, like I've said in the past, is if at 5 o'clock in the morning I get a phone call that somebody's riding their bicycle for exercise and a chihuahua is chasing them down the street, well, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pay an officer time and a half overtime to go take care of a chihuahua that's running down the street at that time. It's not necessary. But if it's a, if it's a crime where somebody's going to get hurt or something like that, who, who in their right mind would say, I'm sorry, we don't have somebody on duty right now? I mean, morally, ethically, that's, that's wrong, whether, whether or not it's statutorily allowed. Well, I think we need to advertise again. I think when we advertise, we need to put it on the Kansas work site. We need to put it on the website. Um, I wouldn't recommend a local paper. Spradley will kill me for that, I know, but we've, we've exhausted the local base, I think, at this point. I don't think there's anybody out there, so I think we need to look at Great Bend Crap. Well, that's where it's, that's we've advertised in surrounding papers in the past, too, so we can do that. And somebody refresh my memory if they remember, what did we authorize? Twelve, twelve fifteen hours? It was twelve dollars an hour. Okay, make sure that goes in the ad. And we can start there. But something else, I, I, I'm just tossing this out there, if, if, if it would be of interest. You know, I mean, Mel, if, if some of your guys would be interested in going to a two-week part-time academy to do something like that, would that be possible? I mean, they, are, they already work for the city. A part-time officer would only have to spend two weeks at an academy for the purpose of learning criminal law, qualifying on their firearm, that kind of thing. So you're saying like after our working hours? Well, yeah, or weekends or, or something like Yeah, I'm, no, I'm not going to try to pull somebody from you. Right, but yeah, I, you know, just be a matter of asking. When they're not on call. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, I'm just trying to, okay, you know. Let, if, me, let me ask counsel a question. Would they be willing to pick up, I'm assuming there's a cost involved with that two weeks. Just their salary. salary. It's just like our academy. The only thing you have to pay while they're there is their salary and the mileage to and from. Okay, so if you had somebody in the community who was interested in doing that, would be that be something that you would consider? With a contract, yes. Okay. Because I don't, I don't want to put somebody through two weeks of a part-time academy and have them go six months and decide that they don't like it or they go to work somewhere else where they're not allowed to do it anymore. Okay. The, re you know, the reason I was suggesting no, I, yeah, our I own people is because they're already here. Right. Um, they're already covered. But they're also already working 40 plus hours a week with standby pay and on call time, just like you guys do. I, I'm just. No, I know. I'm and I'm just trying to look at other potential options that will impact. Mm -hmm. What about a county employee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm asking council is if they're willing to pay, what is it, eight hours a day? Yeah. Yeah, it would be just, a, you know, they would have the weekends off, it'd be a 40 hour week. Well, it may be a little bit more. I think with the with the part time class, there may be some evening stuff. But okay. You wouldn't and be looking at more than four to six hours a week, probably, overtime. What um, What I'm looking at, and I'm not looking for a decision right now because that's not really what we're setting up. But between now and the next meeting, what I'd like you guys to think about is, would you be willing to spend a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to train somebody? and sign them to a two or three year contract to cover vacations, training time, whatever, with the understanding that as a part-time employee there aren't going to be, there isn't going to be a benefits package, there won't be health insurance, you know, it'll just be <coughs> a straight salary thing, or a straight hourly thing. But between now and the next meeting, if you guys can think about that a little bit and see if that's something you're willing to consider then that might be a potential solution. I think that if we considered that, um, and we did a contract that I've suggested, I think it should needs to be put under. If they're going to go through all of this, and we are paying it, 
they need to fulfill their obligation. If they don't and they decide this is not for me halfway through or even at the end, then they need to pay the money back. It's the same thing that happens with the state when people go to uh, take the EMT classes. Well, it's the same similar. thing. It's the same thing we got with our full-time officers too. You sign a two-year contract, mm -hmm. and it's prorated, and it's one of two things: if you quit, then you pay it back, or if you go to another department, typically that department for getting a certified officer will agree to well, there we go, to then. pay the prorated rate to you know to fulfill the contract. Okay, well, there we go. So on the agenda for the next meeting, I'd like part-time officer put under. The police department, please. Okay. Anything else that anybody would like to discuss? Well, this is small potatoes compared to everything else, but our offices, um, we could use some storage. And I, you know, we moved the council room downstairs and we don't really have room for more file cabinets or anything, but you know I've looked and if we could get some wall cabinets so that we can put some things away, um, you know, kind of above, it would probably help our storage out some throughout the year. Okay. If you want to get some quotes and bring it to the next meeting, that would be fine. Okay. And we do, we are set up on a rotation on our computers in the office. And it is, I, it's a little late, I brought it to the table, but I'll have a, an invoice in the packet, a bid for the new computer okay. for the treasurer this year. Okay, anything else? Yeah, I think we need to touch on insurance a little bit. Okay. I think it came up on the last meeting or two meetings ago or something. Got grandfather in on deal. I think we extended it for what? Six months. Yeah. <coughs> Moving it to uh, insuring the employee only and uh, possibly up in their salary. Can. Is that what we considered? It was an option. I don't think we, it was an option. Yeah, I don't it was an option we talked about. Well, I think we considered it. I think it was an option. And I'm agreeing with you. I don't know. It don't seem to me like it's fair to a single employee pay his, and then you turn around and you pay a, another employee and all of his family free of charge. I'm, that ain't fair. My personal opinion. What do you guys think? Well, it's not in the aspect of pay, no. Because that makes somebody else be getting a lot more benefit, a bigger benefit package than somebody else. I mean, if you're just looking at it that way. Yeah. You know, if they're working somewhere else for the same hourly wage and they move to the city, they're making some big bucks. Well, same one, yeah. The family savings, whatever. <clears throat> and maybe a possible solution is that we don't penalize the current employees, but as we bring new hires on, we make it the policy that we are only going to insure a single, do a single premium. There will be some cost savings for us in that respect. Are you legal to do that, though? Yes. I thought what you were, what you did for one employee, you have to do for all. You talking about Obamacare? No, I'm just talking as general. Uh -uh. Equal opportunity employer. Yeah, equal opportunity, but if you put a policy in place and you let them be aware that that's the policy that they're coming in under, you're still an equal opportunity employer. There are other communities that are doing that. What about okay. changing their deductible too? The employees are already there. That's something that can be discussed as well. Do you guys have an idea of are you wanting to make it percentage based? Are you wanting to pay so much towards a premium? Do you, I mean, that's all, those are all things that we'll need to talk about. What, what would you guys like to see in terms of numbers to help you make that decision? 
I don't know, my insurance is, is $2,000, $5,000. Okay. That's what I do. But I just insure, insure the employer. What's yours, George? What's McKenzie well, saying? Uh, you probably don't want to hear ours. What? Well, I don't. We I throw mine out there. We, we pay 100%. But, I mean, the, the only reason that I don't necessarily like this is we're, we're using taxpayer money to do this in, instead of my own money. What I do on, I mean, what you and I do on our own is either our own smartness or our own stupidity, how anybody wants right. to look at it. But, I mean, this is, this is we're playing, we're paying, playing with tax money and not, not all, somebody's own individual. Not all money. the insurance is paid out of taxpayer money. The water and light departments pay for those employees out of that. It's still taxpayer money. Well, I mean, my, but it's Troy's not a bill levy, but it's it's a yeah, service. Okay, it's well, I'm paying state. for Troy's then with my bill from him. I'm, you know, I mean, if you're going to look at it that way too. You yeah, know, but uh, you have a choice whether you do business with me or not. That's true. Where we don't have a choice on this. You know what I mean? Taxpayers just know we all don't have a choice to say, well, man, we got mail hired. Man, I just don't like mail, so what I'm she, not going to pay taxes. What she's saying she is the, the welding shop uses a lot of electricity. They're paying for more than you and I, right? Not necessarily. Not I'm my, just saying it say goes taxpayer. down to the consumer no matter right. what business you have. Yeah. It goes to the consumer. Right, but taxpayers don't have a choice. What if what I if mean you, a deal like this? What if you look at that going back to like we were talking about retention though? You know, the better benefits you can you can provide your employees longer to keep them around. And if you for instance, I mean us that pay the capers are gonna kinda of get hit twice this year because our insurance is gonna go up and then the, the percentage we have to pay for our retirement's going up too. Yeah, but some of us got so, bit when we got hired on because well, some I, of I us are paying that. six percent now. But what I'm saying is if if you get somebody to come to work and they're like, oh crap, my insurance is too high, we have to go somewhere else, and you just sent them to a 14-week police academy, or but you, you just... Okay, but you explain that up front. There isn't any I, misconception I, as far as what's going to occur. They make that decision based on the way things are at that point in time. And as someone who works for another organization that is funded with taxpayer dollars, I can tell you that our insurance, they pay 100% of a single premium. And for those employees that are part-time, and when I say part-time, I mean they only work the school year, they get a percentage of that. And yet we still have employees who are making $8 an hour taking the health insurance. So that's why I'm suggesting that we instead of penalizing the existing employees and making it incredibly difficult on them financially, because let's face it. If, yeah, I mean, if, if we do anything, I want to see, but if we want to change anything, I want to see what it does to the employees. Somebody sure. to come and work at an $8 an hour wage than it is to go and find somebody that's going to get trained to be go through all the classes and stuff to be a law enforcement officer and want to do that type of a, a job too, you know. I mean, like Adam was saying, if you... Okay, can somebody tell me what the county pays towards their health insurance? It's more than us, but they get paid a lot more now. I thought they just you don't think so? Well, I thought the county was less. Than no, the the for a family plan, as far as I know, the deputies pay around two twenty five a month. Where I think I pay. Okay, when he oh. says it's more a month, he's saying that the county employees are paying more than what the city employees are. I think is that right. correct? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it's ninety five five here, city. Over there, it's. Yeah, I, I don't know what the percentages are. I just know what they pay for a family plan versus what we pay. And what are the deputies making an hour? Um, the deputies, they're, the deputies make them more a year than I am. Um, they're making close to, both of the deputies should be right at, tw somewhere between 20 and 21 now. Okay.
and they're starting wage. You know, I mean, where where we might start a, an officer at that 13, an uncertified officer between 12 and 14, they're starting between 15 and 17. I do think, I understand what you're saying, Julianne, but as far as someone coming on as a new hire and say, well, everyone else that's working here, they're, you know, the family plan and all that and stuff, so i got to pick mine up, you know, they're going to look at that. That's not a good way for someone to attract someone to stay or want to be part of a, a, a group like that. And a lot of people are, I mean, it's, it's a good benefit. And you all know that, and a lot of times it's a, it's a, people look at it as a have or have not. You know, people that don't have good insurance or have to pay a lot more look at the city employees and say, well, I don't have it that good, why should they? I mean, and this is, you know, taxpayer money, whether it's revenue or whatever, they look at that differently, and I think that's where a, a lot of this comes from. If everyone had the same amount of insurance as we have right now, I don't, I don't think it'd be the, the issue that it is. But... And I understand the city wants to save some money, but I am going to just say it, it's, it's a good benefit to the track. It. That's, I mean, I make it no secret. That's why I'm here. That's why I came to St. John, is because where I worked at, they only did a single employee. And I heard about St. John, a family. That's why I'm here. So it, it means a lot. And I understand the city has to watch the money. So I, I'm, I'm not taking that away. Well, I think St. John's the only one paying it in the country. No, no, John. I There's still some cities that pay 100% of yeah, everything. Yeah, there are. I have several on, on an email so. here that I put And there's some cities answer. that don't pay much of anything at all. So it's across the board. One way to look at it is a municipality, if government, you know, a municipality, I guess employees maybe should go on Obamacare. And get pulled out of the loop. No. And, I mean, that's an option. That was the whole point of health, Affordable Health Care Reform Act. And, you know, it would be way cheaper for the city to pay $2,000 a year per employee penalty for not providing coverage than it is for us to provide coverage. So that is definitely an option. I can honestly say I wouldn't want to have to go on Obamacare, but... Well, it's government health care. I, I understand. That's what they want. Yeah. Supposed to be the best. Hmm? Yeah. It's supposed to be the best. That's the best. Are you going to sign up for it? I don't know. Am I? No. So there you go. That answers your own question. But, but I don't work for the government. Right. But I'm just I'm saying, as, a, as just a human That's being... That's my option. As just a human being, I don't know too many people that are interested in that. Yeah. Aren't they backpedaling now? Oh, yeah. Well, they, there's been talk even about the changes in the the uh, grandfathering that we're talking about here. Hmm. Has anybody here got their insurance canceled? No. Oh, actually, yeah, I did. You did? Mm -hmm. did, they they, huh? did they retract that? Did they retract that, though? He, Not yet, they haven't. <clears throat> not not at the co-op, no. But it doesn't matter because I'm a veteran, so I'm getting going to be getting my medical taken care of anyway, so it doesn't matter to me. But I'm, not everyone's in my situation, unfortunately. I mean, if, if I was in a situation where I had to choose between it, I would not choose Obamacare. I'm sorry. So, it's just... You know, like I said, I don't know what the answer is, but... I just know that we're, and I, and I understand it's a benefit, and I wouldn't want to be, but I've got to come up with the extra six hundred and some dollars a month to cover my family with health insurance. You know, and so do all the other city employees who have families. Or not the city, but the school employees who have families, I'm sorry. What is the school in Julian? A hundred percent of a single premium, which right now for our policy is four hundred and ninety-six dollars a month. Now we Did they change that, or is that the way it's always been? To my knowledge, that's the way. It, I've been there since July first of two thousand nine, and as long as I've been there, that's the way it's been. When Becky Thrasher was on the council, that's how it was then too. I mean, I. 
I would love to do something, I just don't know how to do it without killing employees. Financially. Financially killing you know, I mean, employees. Or whatever you I mean, that's my only holdout. But if we were doing something new, it wouldn't be a problem at all. This whole situation has just made a mess out of every every I mean, that, aspect that, of our country. It's just the the only you know we there's no way we can do any change anything without without phasing it in over a period of time. Right. Plus, some of these people, if you've done what uh, Julianne, the school does, 100 percent of the single, some of these people, family is going to run them six, seven hundred dollars a month. Yeah. And we'll have mass exodus. Well, okay. Steph, okay. I have no doubt about it. Might I mean, you're going to have to phase it in, but it's also something that's going to have to be addressed in your budget. The tune of $10,000, $12,000 a month insurance. Astronomical. Anyway, that's my view on it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to a question I asked a minute ago, which is what do you guys as a council need to see in terms of numbers to help you make decisions about where we need to go in the future where this is concerned? I know that um, at one of the last meetings I had broken it down to what it equates to an hour for the different health insurance plans if you were to look at it as part of their hourly wage. Um, I don't know if if that would help. I mean, if you're looking at increasing their wages to help offset the cost, you know that information would be valuable. Um, I, I don't know. Again, I kind of need a direction as far as what. But the, I mean, the, the whole problem that I see in this. And it's, I don't understand it, and nobody else does, evidently. But is if we change this, we're going to change our grandfather's status. So that opens us up to Obama rules or whatever, and nobody can tell us what that's going to. Entail. Well, no. It, what it means is that in order for the coverage to say stay, stay the same as it is now on the city's plan, uh -huh. we can't change anything. We can still provide them a Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas insurance plan. It will have some of the features of the, of the Obamacare, you know, as far as well visits and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure, and I don't know if Jonna is or not either, as far as if we were to compare the two policies side by side, what the differences would be. There is some differences. Definitely, you'll, there are some things that are mandated that have to be done that we don't have on the old plan. The only thing that's you know, like Troy said, is whatever they change, that ungrandfathered will be subject to those changes. So, <clears throat> but we, we, we have a, it's not apples to apples, it's apples to oranges, it's still in the fruit family, but it's, it just, it's not exactly the same, but it's comparable when it comes to out of pocket. But, but say we, uh, Say we decide that we uh, want to pay 100% uh, of only the employee without the family mm -hmm. today. And uh, say, say Mel's plan or Adam's plan right now is running a total of 1500 bucks for easy figure a month, his total deal. So if we change that and he paid he has to, we're only going to pay 500 now instead of 1,000, and he's going to go to 500 or take it to 1,000 instead of 500. If we gave him that pay raise to, to offset that today, and all we're ever going to pay is the 100% of the single, what we do between us actually affects nothing on the policy, correct? Oh, yeah, we'd have to go to the new plan. You couldn't do it, the grandfather plan. Yeah, we, if, if in order to stay grandfathered, we have to contribute the same percentage that we have been. We would, okay. can't change it over. We went up that 5%. Five percent. Is the city's plan, are there different deductible levels to it? 
Yeah, but you can't change it over 5% the way I understood it. Right? Yeah, you can't change the deductible amount either. Or you're not grandfathered either. Right. I when you. we voted, I thought we already voted to raise that to 5%. Yeah, we did. Okay. From the initial sign up date, which are the yeah. initial time. 2010. Right. And so, yeah, that you voted on. And right. That was to go, go up for to 5%. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the city's current plan. Are there levels of deductibles available under that plan? I think there's just the one. It's all 500? Yeah. Okay, so there isn't a thousand or a fifteen hundred dollar option? There, it, if we went off of that plan we would have to go to the new plan. No. Okay, then no. I guess if because, we change... Okay, and the reason I say no is insurance policy has three different levels of coverage. You can do $500 um, deductible, no, we $1,000 don't have that. deductible, or $1,500 no. deductible. No. Okay, so it's all the, just the $500 deductible. Okay. And do you guys pay that? Yeah, the deductible. The employee pay. pays it or the city pays it? The, 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 the employee the, pays the deductible. They used to. The, the, the city used to pay the deductible and all the copay and everything. And then I don't know what year it was when we started paying part of the premium. We picked up the deductible and our copays. And when you did that, did they do that all in one year, or did they phase it in? No, it was all in one year. So can we not change that? No, we move out of grandfatherness mm -hmm. is the whole plan, and the whole deal. That's what I mean. If, if if we knew what Obamacare actually meant, but nobody does. <laughs> right. I mean, I would I would be all for today saying we'll give every, we're only going to pay 100 percent of the employee, and we'll give you a pay raise. You'll get an extra thousand dollars a month in, on your pay to to make up for that today. And there you're on your on your own. If you know any rate increases, whatever you're going to accept that just as we have to. Um, but the only part is that, and I don't have any idea what that means if you lose grandfatheredness. It just means that all the provisions of Obamacare become applicable to your insurance Right, but policy. nobody can tell us what that means. I mean, I know the consequences, but I don't know the, what or I know the mean? action, I don't know the consequences. I don't think we can do anything right now. I mean, that's where we're, I mean. You can't do nothing when we're just flying blind. When mm -hmm. We have no idea what Obamacare. Well, I mean, unless as a as a council, we're I guess willing to to accept that risk. But I don't even know what I mean. What it means to us as a council. I mean, as a city. I mean, it may come back and end up costing us more. I have no idea. Well, we're going to stay the way we are for six months. We we uh, we voted on that last. Right, right. Yeah, but we need to keep this is something that we're doing. It has to stay on the agenda and tell them four months in advance what after six months looks like. I don't know how to do that. Yeah, and uh, like I said, I mean, we don't know. We don't know the consequences of our actions. I mean, that's that's the only bothers me. Especially on the when you're on the new with plan. Uncle Sam. On the new plan, if we weren't grandfathered, that's age based, and that's the thing that scares me. Is you know. Yeah, when I retire, you're going to get somebody younger, but everybody that's younger is going to get older, and so everything goes up with their age. Everything goes up anyway. Well, I mean, it's going to go up I said, we way more. more. I have, I've only been on two years, and every year it's gone up substantially. But I'm, I'm saying like a single plan for a young person was... Um, like $300 versus a single plan for an older person. It was eight, yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I mean, I can. I mean, so it, it might be a savings understand. now, but in in a couple of years, when everybody gets on up there, I don't know. It's well, and it sounds to me like we need to revisit the subject probably in March sometime. That's three months before the six. I mean, I wish there was somebody we could call that could tell us the consequences. I don't think there's anybody knows. I mean, until until we know the consequences, we're going to be at the same point. 
you know, until somebody can tell us what will be the result of our actions. And even those people don't even know what's going on. They're, well, they're and that's what I mean, until you find that out, I don't know how we can, I mean, to me it's even kind of pointless to keep it on the agenda until you can find that information out, because we're going to be still at the same boat we are today. Yeah, but if we don't keep it on the agenda, we'll get all done. Well, that's true. That'd be all right. Oh, we still have the issue. You can't just walk away from it. Okay. All right. I've exhausted that topic for the time being. Or the note. Is there anything <coughs> anybody would like to discuss? What did you cook for dinner? Yeah, I didn't. Oh, you didn't Sorry. like it. We should have known Hanson didn't bring that. <laughs> yeah. Where you find it? Yeah, I don't know. Where you find it? I was just say, I had good intentions. I was going to fix breakfast for everybody, but that's so often the first of my good intentions that didn't happen. Um, I want to thank all of you for taking your time this morning. Um, I also want to find out if this is something that you guys are interested in doing a couple times a year, maybe, or quarterly or never again. At least annually. I wouldn't mind doing it, but I'm not sure if there are more than that. Okay, and, and I'm open to other things. This was just the... Again. I, I was going to say once or twice a year would be... I think okay. I agree with that. It would be our... Whatever time is suitable for everyone else, because my schedule is pretty flexible, so... Would you guys prefer an evening meeting as to a morning? Depends on time of year. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I understand. I mean, there's certain times of year I really ain't got time. But. Yeah. Well, and that's why I tried to schedule it for now. I thought it right. would be quiet for everybody with weather and whatever. So, but okay, but we'll, we'll look at doing this again in about six months. And again, I appreciate everybody's time, staff, as well as the council. I think this has been valuable to be able to sit and, and talk at length about some of these things. So, with that said. Yeah, six months will be about budget time. <laughs> then, do I need to do a motion to adjourn? No, I mean, I'll just say that it was over at 1130 because we really Is didn't. Any more water no. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again. I appreciate it.